Just off the banks of the Mississippi, the city of Memphis calls it the classic. And the support over the previous 12 years supports that. At this football game, the Southern Heritage Classic has drawn over 50,000 fans five of the last six seasons. Tonight, they'll pound the Liberty Bowl once again as Tennessee State and Jackson State prepare to renew a gem of a rivalry. Oh, yeah, black college football is back on BET, and we got a good one for you tonight. A tiger clash as Tennessee State and Jackson State prepare to go head-to-head -head on this very field for the eighth straight time. And it is a beautiful night as two teams that know each other extremely well. They've been playing since 1949, preparing to do battle in the 13th annual Southern Heritage Classic. Hello, everybody. I'm George Johnson. If you like scoring well, this is the place to be. Both Tennessee State and Jackson State know how to light up the scoreboard. You see, Tennessee State comes in, they're averaging 30 points a game. Jackson State comes in off a game in which they score 36 and a loss. And when they get together, oh, oh boy, it becomes a Donnybrook. Last year, they combined for 97 points. And with that, I bring in my broadcast partner who knows all about scoring points. See, they don't understand. See, long before McNabb and McNair, there was McPherson yeah, at Syracuse yeah. doing his thing with his arm and his legs. And I would assume you're excited because this gives you a chance tonight to see one of the best quarterbacks in black college football, and that's Robert Kent of Jackson State. Exactly right, George. Robert Kent is a big-time ball player and has all the skills that you want in a quarterback. As you look at his numbers, keep in mind he is 6'5", 218, and very, very athletic. He gives opposing quarterbacks, excuse me, opposing coaches a lot to think about in preparation. You know, coming into this ball game, James Reese, of course, the head coach of Tennessee State, he says, listen, I've been working all week long trying to get something to stop Robert Kent, and I think I've come up with a plan. We had to give him a variety of different looks. Uh, when he thinks we're in zone, uh, we have to be in man. When he thinks we're in man, we have to play zone. So we had to give him a variety of different zone blisses, uh, zone coverages, and man-to-man -man coverages. And when we're coming, they can't know where we're coming from. And when we're not coming, they can't know we're not coming. <laughs> James Reese with that little laugh, but I got a feeling Robert Kent can wipe a smile off your face if he has to. Now, he says he has a plan to stop Kent, but does he have a plan when it comes to his own quarterback situation? Well, the good news and bad news is that he has three quarterbacks. The bad news is that not one of them is playing like a starter. So James Reese has had to go to a little bit of a game of the QB shuffle. The first week, it was Bryson Rosser, and he, he faltered in week one, so week two, came out with Riley Walker. He's the guy who will start today. But don't be uh, don't be surprised to see him go to the third guy, Kenny <laughs> Irby. This is the guy who came out of spring practice number one. Until one of these guys steps up and takes control of this team, he's going to play this game, quarterback show. Yeah, so we may see all three guys today as he still looks for that starting quarterback before the Ohio Valley Conference schedule starts to kick in. Before the season, both teams were top five in black college football. They've run into some bumps in the roads, looking for a little momentum as the season gains momentum. Today's Black College Football Classic is brought to you by Southwest Airlines, bringing people together with low fare, and by Budweiser, delivering beer at its best with a crisp, clean, and refreshing taste known only to the king of beers, and by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Today's Black College Football Classic is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Bring now, like I told you, you playing for respect. You playing for respect. You're going to send a message all the way across this country tonight. Let's go, my brother. Let's go, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. No, baby. No, James Reese, of course, talking about the fact that his club is playing for respect, looking for a victory as they come into tonight's contest one in one. His counterpart in this one will be Robert Hughes in his fourth season. They call him the judge at Jackson State. He's been with this program for 30 seasons, including three as a player. Yeah, you cut this guy right here. I got a feeling that he starts to bleed Jackson State blue. Make no mistake about it. So now, looking at the toss, and TSU won the toss, and 
they elected to receive the kick. At first, we thought they had deferred and thought maybe they might be able to give Robbie Kent to <laughs> Robert Kent to make a mistake early on, but they're going to take the football and start with it right away. No question about it. You don't want to give that ball to Robert Kent right away to let him set the tempo. Tennessee State is going to try to set the tempo right away, no matter who steps out first at quarterback. Carlos Wright and Patrick Jenkins are your deep men for Tennessee State. Two of the most exciting return men in the Ohio Valley Conference. And we want you to keep in mind that that's exactly where Tennessee State plays their regular season. They're not in the SWAC. They're not in the MEAC. They're in the Ohio Valley Conference. And they have represented well over the past couple of years. In fact, it was just three years ago that they ended the regular season 11-1 and and were number one in all of Division I AA. This is truly a great program. But Jackson State started the season number two in black college football until taking a couple of losses and need one here. Carlos Wright had a hole and slipped. And slips just shy of the 30-yard line. Time now for today's starting lineups. Brought to you by Budweiser, delivering beer at its best with the crisp, clean, and refreshing taste known only to the king of beers. Walker, Jones, Shaw, Cooper, and Patrick Alexander, who was formerly on the defensive line, is on the offensive side of the football, the backs. It's Sugar Sanders, the transfer from Memphis, with Ricky Gibbs as fullback. C.J. Johnson can catch, Ron Jackson can catch, and Steve Farmer is a guy they say can go to the next level. He is your tight end. First and ten. And we talked about the fact that Walker will be your quarterback. And he immediately comes out throwing the football. Pass was intended for Patrick Jenkins, and Jenkins couldn't make it. A look now at our Budweiser starting lineups in the defense. Bell, Boys, Sample, and Bobby Mays, the front line for Jackson State, the linebackers. Elgin Andrews, they say he gets no respect at this program. He may earn it before the night is out. Morgan, Cooley, Bonner, and Willard are your defensive secondary for the Tigers of Jackson State. Second down in 10, single setback behind Walker, and he hands it off to his deep back, and that looked like that was Sanders with the carry. So Riley Walker, the sophomore from Chattanooga, Tennessee, is your starting quarterback. He has completed 40% of his passes coming into this one. And coach says that he's the one who knows the system better than anyone else. Yeah, yeah, he's been here the longest. He knows exactly what James Reese wants to get accomplished in this offense. As you saw, he can't have dropped passes this early in the game because he knows he's looking over his shoulder. Second down and six. Walker over the middle. Oh, he floats this one. Got away from him. Looked like he was looking for his tight end farmer. And the incomplete pass now makes it fourth down. And that drop pass on first down really hurt you. It puts you in a tough situation to start the ball game off. And all three of these quarterbacks for Tennessee State are going to be looking over the shoulders when they get an opportunity. So every play does count in their confidence as the game goes on. And you don't expect that from a guy like Patrick Jenkins to drop footballs. He's been around for quite some time. Back deep. Javaro January for Jackson State to receive the punt by Joey Hudak, who punts and plays kicks for this club. And that ball is going to take a Tennessee State bounce and inside the 20, going to stop at the 19-yard line. And that is where Jackson State inside takes over first and 10, 48-yard punt by Hudak, no return. Now a look at our Budweiser starting lineups. Matthews, Randall, Bates, Stinson, and Maddox, the front line for Jackson State. And they're going to do their best to protect their quarterback, Robert Kent. Tanarka Counselor is a good little running back with Jones, Jacobs, Manning, and Ross. You see all receivers there. They like to spread things out here at Jackson State. And Jackson State will not hold. It's not a hurry-up offense. It's just a no-huddle offense. You can see Robert Kent calling signals at the line. No one in the backfield behind Kent on first and ten. But he hands the ball off and gives it to Tim Manning. Manning works his way close to the 30-yard line. And we've got a flag thrown already for Jackson State. We saw them run this play a lot yesterday in practice. When you don't have a lot of people in the backfield and you have so many wide receivers on the field, you start doing different things with your wide receiver to get them into the run game. Holding right there in the middle of your screen, 
you know, when you when you have running backs coming across the formation like that or a receiver coming across the formation like that, sometimes the linemen can't don't see where they are, and when they don't know where the back is, they have a tendency to hold and grab a little bit. Which is what you're doing is defining angles. In other words, folks sometimes don't understand how important angles are in football. Absolutely, because. The defensive player gets the angle and gets the edge, and so now he knows he has to grab and kind of pull mm -hmm. a little bit and try to hide it. Got to beat a guy to a spot. But with the penalty, they move it back 10 yards, and it'll make it now first and 20. Norman Nolan, or Lawrence Nolan, excuse me, your fullback slash tailback is in the ball game. He's the lone setback behind Robert Kent, who has two receivers split to his right, one to his left. Goes to the solo man, and that ball was up for grabs. Good play by the defensive back, Scott Hunt Cunningham, to make the pop on Robert Jacobs. And this has been the problem with Kent all year long and throughout his career. He, that ball has a tendency to sail on him. He has got to put that ball at the bottom of the numbers of Jacobs and give him a chance to protect the football with his body. How do you do that? You do that by following through in the football and stepping into the throw. So it's second down and 10. Kent's going to have to start stepping into a couple of throws because they were moving back even further after the man jumped offside. You look at Jackson State's numbers over the first two weeks of the season. You look what they did in, in, in those games, and they put up so many points, so many first downs. Five minutes snap, full start, offense, five yard penalty, still second down. And this is the reason why they've lost those football games. Mistakes, turnovers, the, the high pass by Kent, and now Tennessee State's going to be playing with the short side of the field unless Jackson State can get out of this hole. They scored seven points against Southern Miss, but then came right back and scored 42, as Dom alluded to, last week against Andy. Kent escaped pressure in his own end zone, drops the football and jumps back on top of it. Picked up six yards, lost the football, and gets the football back at the 11. A sloppy start for Robert Kent, but you you, told, you look at the athleticism that I talked about in the open. You see the way he, he, he skips a tackle there and then tucks it and runs. Now he's got to tuck that football away. You become a running back once you decide to go vertically. He's got to tuck it away and become a running back. E.C. Rockman was the man who forced the fumble for Tennessee State. But Jackson State now with a third down in 18 situation. Three receivers split to the right. No one to the left for Kent. Gonna throw it over the middle. Almost picked off. And again, that man Cunningham been active, made a pop on Jacobs a couple of plays ago, and almost comes up with the interception. Yeah, and Tennessee State is very confident in their ability on defense. You, you talk about the three receiver, four receiver sets of Jackson State, and Tennessee State feels like they have the speed and the talent to cover these guys in space. That's a great break on the ball by number seven, Cunningham, coming underneath the curl route. Cunningham, the junior from Orlando, makes the play, so Patrick Jenkins now is back deep to receive the punt. He's inside Jackson State territory, so they should get good field position after this one. Jenkins takes it at the 39-yard line, and he's brought down immediately by the linebacker, Larry McSwain. We'll have more right after this. And welcome back. We are at the Liberty Bowl here in Memphis, Tennessee. Tennessee State and Jackson State. Meeting here for the eighth straight time on this field for the Tigers. This is actually the second of four games against teams from the SWAC. They played Prairie View and beat them last week in the John Merritt Classic. After this game, they travel to Las Vegas to take on Doug Williams in Grambling State. That'll be in the Silver Dollar Classic, and they still have a match on October 5th against Alabama A&M. You get a good look right there at quarterback Riley Walker as you see this series history. Yeah. How's that? There's a lot at stake in this ball game. <laughs> this is the rubber match. TSU has won three of the last four. They now have the football in Jackson State territory at the 39-yard line. Walker is still your quarterback. He's got eye formation. Sugar Sanders is his deep back. He gives it to Sanders. Sanders is met immediately by Marion Mark. 
How about Sugar Sanders, though? Here's a young man, the senior from Coral Springs, Florida. He's a transfer from the University of Memphis, so he's coming home. He's definitely he's coming home, and he's a really he's a power runner. They like the way this guy runs with his shoulders forward. He's going to make a DB or a linebacker pay for it if they try to stop him in the secondary. Oh, they say every time he starts running, it's all downhill. All downhill. <laughs> and you don't want to be at the bottom of that hill. That's right. Second down now at nine. Inside handoff, here's Sanders, looking to, for, a, for a hill to run on. And picks up another two yards on the play. Yeah, and he just ran into it at the bottom of that hill. He ran to number 44, the, the SWAC Defensive Player of the Year preseason in Elgin Andrews, a guy who is, is a tremendous force on defense for Jackson State. There's a, a good look right there of Andrews, and that jersey's going to get a lot more green, a lot more brown, a lot more dirty. <laughs> Might even have a few more blue stains on it before this thing is all over. The senior from Macomb, Mississippi. On third down now for Tennessee State. Lone setback is Sanders. Looks like a double tight end set for Walker. And his pass is, they're saying, caught. And a nice little catch by Ron Jackson, his fifth reception of the season. And let me tell you what Walker does real well in this. He throws this ball very, very early. And that gave Jackson a, enough time to come back to that football. That ball is in the air right now. Now he has to set his feet and come back to it. That is an excellent pass because it was thrown so early. Yeah, but was it a catch? Was that a catch? I mean, it looked as if it was close to the ground. You're talking to a quarterback. Uh, Maybe we're lined up for the you next play already. Said. How did I know that already? 16-yard play, first attempt for Tennessee State. Walker fake. Walker completes it to the big boy. Is tight end, and that's Anthony Brown, the freshman from Nashville, Tennessee. And one thing about these Tennessee State quarterbacks, Walker is a good athlete. Watch him. He gets his head around real quick. He sees the linebacker coming, just dumps it off real quick, gets it out to his big tight end. Great athleticism in these Tennessee State quarterbacks. Have the ability to make so many things happen offensively. Close to a first down, but he was a yard short, so make it second and one. Ball's marked at the 11. They don't give it to Sanders. Oh, look at that linebacker. It looked like Larry McSwain was the defense. Actually, it was James McGowan, the linebacker, who was able to penetrate the line of scrimmage and make the, pick, the quick hit. Yeah, McGowan was the same guy who put pressure on Walker in the previous play, and he's been so far very active in that backfield. And Tennessee State's going to have to do a better job of their run game if they're going to keep, keep the pressure off of Walker in the pass game. Four receivers split to the right for Walker on third down in a yard and a half. And he's going to go to the left. And the pass is incomplete. So they're playing a little mind game. Well, what you do is you, you set four receivers to the field, to one side of the field, and then on the other side of the field, you have Jackson in the one-on-one -on -one situation. There you go, Jackson, one-on-one. -on -one. He's got a little bit of inside coverage. He's got to fight inside. Now, this is just a bad throw. That ball has to be up around the numbers. But if it is, he's going to take a heck of a hit from the free safety. Well, Michael Cooley was left out there sort of hanging to dry. But fortunately, the pass wasn't caught. But now coming in to attempt the field goal, this one would be from 28 yards out, and that's Mr. Joey Hudak. Kick is up, and the kick is good. Joey Hudak, how about this? He's a perfect five for five on the season. And he connects on three here, and the Tigers of Tennessee State have the early lead. And welcome back to the 13th Annual Southern Heritage Classic, Jackson State, Tennessee State. Jackson State, of course, with their experienced quarterback, Robert Kent, who this year is more of a leader than he has been last year. In fact, we caught up with the quarterback yesterday and asked him about the difference between this year and last year. And we'll hear what he had to say after this kickoff. Back deep to receive the kick is Michael Johnson for Jackson State. And it's a short kick, fumble on the kickoff, and it looks as if Jackson State was able to recover the football at about the 27-yard line. But back to Robert Kent and on the differences between this year and last year. Uh, last year we had an uh, abundant supply of older receivers, Lawrence Store and T.C. Taylor. This year we have younger guys, and it showed first couple of games that we weren't quite on course. But in the fourth quarter last week, we had a heck of a performance. So we're pretty much on the same page now. And we're just going to go out there and air it out, give the fans a good show. 
Yeah, it's all about that show when it comes to you quarterbacks. That's all you think about it, it's a show. Absolutely, when a quarterback's having a show. great day, it's a great show. <laughs> First and 10, this time he hands off the counts, but counts the finds little room and takes it out near the 41-yard line where he gets a first down. Now, he talked a lot about what he lost last year, and I got to tell you, when you lose receivers like T.C. Taylor, Lawrence Story, and I'll tell you more about that in a second as we look at the replay. Well, this is Nolan, and, and Nolan's an excellent back because he's a little bit stronger than Counselor, and what that gives you when you spread the, the defense out, it gives you somebody who can run through tackles. Here's Nolan again. Nolan running into defensive players, and he's about two yards shy of midfield. Now we take a look at our starting defense, Robert Brown and Horn, Manny Robles, who's been there for a while, is one of your tackles. The linebackers, Bryce Smith and Jermaine Beal have been impressive, Carnell Myers the other. Your defensive secondary is Giddens, Cunningham, Rachman, and of course, Asafaula. Pass is complete by Robert Kent as he finds his wide out Tory Ross, the freshman from Jackson, Mississippi, who picks up first down yardage on the catch. Yeah, we, we talked about Robert Kent and his skills as a quarterback, but also as an athlete. Watch as he gets his feet around, sets his feet, and throws the ball right on time. Again, as a guy who's 6'5", you have to have those good feet to get yourself in position to throw the football. Ross, just a freshman, but is already establishing himself on this club and comes in the team's second leading receiver after two games. First and 10 for the Jackson State Tigers. They're at the 42-yard line. Nolan continues to be the single setback. Two receivers split to either side for 10. Quick pass is caught. This one by Cletus Gordon, another freshman. And I was trying to make a point earlier. He lost a couple of big-time players, and he mentioned that too, in T.C. Taylor, who had 84 catches last year, and Lawrence Story, who had 55 catches last year. And even his tight end, Kendrick Davis, had 29. That's 66% of the touchdown passes that Kent threw went to those three guys no longer on this team. First and 10, after the first down play. Looks like Ken is checking at the line, and it looks like they have a quick timeout on the field. We'll take a quick timeout. So I guess we didn't leave. They didn't call timeout. Or maybe we went and we're back. Over. No? No in the case we're still here? We're still here? Okay, we're still here. <laughs> so now Robert Chan is going to try to get the wheels in motion. First and 10. Inside the 30-yard line, Tennessee State came downfield, got themselves three points, and Jackson State trying to answer. And a whistle again. I think they got a good idea there on TV. <laughs> well, right now, Jackson State's going to go with the title. It's tough to tell what's going on because Jackson State doesn't huddle up, so it's tough to see if they're regrouping or if they're just standing at the line of scrimmage calling another play. Okay, so we are going to take a commercial. 8.02 left here in the first quarter. It's 3-0. Red Fusion. Who's his soda? And welcome back to Memphis. Southern Heritage Classic, the 13th annual. George Johnson, Dominic Pearson, and the rest of our BET crew here bringing you black college football. Jackson State trailing 3 nothing, but driving downfield against the Tigers at PSU. Here's Robert Kent, wide open, and he can make the catch. And Coach Hughes, the judge, is not happy. Manning was on the underneath route, and Kent puts this ball right where it needs to be, wide open. That is what gives coaches and quarterbacks what we call in New York, agita. Is that what it agita, is? Agita, upset stomach. Yeah, he ain't kidding. We're all feeling a little queasy after that one. Good pass by Kent, but Tim Manning, the junior from Jackson, just couldn't hold on to it. So now it makes it second down to Kent. Kent gives it to Nolan, and yes, they were waiting for him this time. Robert Davis, the defensive tackle, shot the gap and met Nolan right where he stood. 
It's almost like they were in the huddle on that one. They knew it was going the launch going the senior and we're waiting for him. So much so that he lost three yards on the play. As you get a good look at Robert Hughes, your head coach for Jackson State. So now third and 13 for Robert Kent. He should be looking at six points right now. But here's Kent, pressure, gonna run. Don't know if he's got enough to get to the first down. Oh, and he runs over a D-back and he's close to the first down. Deion Giddens came up to make the tackle, and Robert Kent said, and your point would be. You know, when a quarterback begins to mature, the one thing that he does right away, he makes decisions quick. This time, Kent made the decision quick to run the football. The other thing that happens when a coach, when a quarterback matures is he knows what he wants to do and what, to, what he has to do to get there, and that's when you see a quarterback tuck the ball and run, show some athletic ability, and then watch him at the end of this play. He's going to decide, I have to get to that flag, lower his shoulder, and try to get that first down. And Giddens, the junior, might hear about that one when films come up next week. Yeah, and 52 is the linebacker field. He's the guy, he, he knew he was going to have to step out and play a little bit of DB against this, this spread offense of Jackson State. That time he got he got a helmet handed to him by the quarterback. Well, they're measuring. They're going to say that Kent, yeah, Kent got the first down and credit his ability to run over that D-back and pick up that little extra that little extra yardage to get the first. Oh, that was Beal, and don't think they're not going to talk about that. Don't think Beal's not going to hear about that from his boys later on. You let a quarterback run you over. So Cat now gets the first down. You notice they do not go into a huddle formation. He's calling signals and calling plays at the line of scrimmage. First and 10, ball is marked just outside the 18-yard line of Tennessee State. Inside handoff, then goes to the big guy, Lawrence Nolan. And Carnell Myers comes up and makes the tackle. And when you talk a little bit about this defense from, from Tennessee State, they talked about the fact that they were going to show Kent a lot of different looks. Have you seen that? Well, so far, they're playing it kind of vanilla. They kind of kind of play it straight and see what the offense is going to do because you don't want to get out of position, especially with the no huddle. So they'll stay vanilla early, and then as the game matures, they'll start to give some different looks. Second down, 10 to go. I formation, counts a deep back. Kent's going to throw anyway. In the pass, in and out of the hands of Manning. And Tim Manning again. And credit Ahmad Smith, defensively, number three, just a freshman from East Point, Georgia, with a defensive play. Yeah, there seemed to be a little confusion on that play of what type of route the receiver's going to run because, you see, he's got to turn around. Manning's got to turn around and slot. He's got to come back to the football so that he can better protect the football and when he gets hit in the back from the DB. So he's got to, they have to decide what kind of route that is. Is he going to cross into the secondary or is he going to stop and come back to the football? Kent, two of six so far in this ball game. Oh, God, no protection. God. Goes right back to Manning and Manning makes the catch this time. And I guess that's what you do as a quarterback. You go to a guy that you know you're going to need down the road to keep throwing it to him even though he's dropped a couple. Yeah, and those are the types of routes that they're going to have to run because I think right now that Robert Kent is throwing the ball. A little, he's a little erratic in his release on the football. It's sailing on him a little bit. And I think he and his receivers are still trying to work out the kink on where they go on their routes. Manning makes the catch. Good for 11 yards and a first down. First and goal. Ball is marked. Six-yard line. Nolan with the handoff. Nolan still on his feet. And Manny Robles finally brings him down, but not until he gets to the two-yard line. And that's, that's what they like about Nolan. As I said before, when you spread a defense out, you really have linebackers taking a step back before they're coming forward. So you want a guy like Nolan who can run through those arm tackles, who can run through the two guys once he gets into the secondary. Nolan with five carries so far, good for 25 yards. And they said coming in that big boy, healthy and running well, and they were going to use him, and they have been true to that. Here's Pouncer, and Tanaka Pouncer gets in, touchdown. Tanaka Pouncer, the senior from Clarksdale, Mississippi, 
gives Jackson State six points, and they lead six to three. And again, this is what that spread offense does for you. And Tanaka Counter running a little bit like Nolan here. He's carrying a couple of guys on his back. He's got Myers. He's got Smith. He's got these guys carrying him on his back. Asher Ashley will come in to attempt the point after, where he's four or five on the season. Kick is up. Kick is good for the freshman from Decatur, Georgia. Jackson State answers the three from Tennessee State with a nice drive. And the lead. We'll be right back. 5-10 left here in our first quarter, and Jackson State drives downfield, 74 yards, took them 12 plays, and with the drive, they cap it with a touchdown run by Tanaka Counselor. That one was good for two yards, and it gives them the 7-3 lead that they have now over Tennessee State. Well, that's exactly what Tennessee State wants to do on defense. They don't want to give up the big play. They had the big play to Manning that Manning dropped the touchdown pass and then exactly what Tennessee State wants to do on defense. Make Jackson State go the length of the football field. Make them have long drives, nice 12, 10 play drives, eat up the clock and take the, take the big play opportunity of Robert Kent out of the picture. Jenkins in right again back deep to receive the kick. As you've got a good look at Asher Ashley kicking off. And this one is going to go to Jenkins. He takes it at the three. Jenkins looking for a seam. Jenkins still on his feet and a face mask, it looks like, on that play. Yeah, that was Anthony Dillon, number 24. Got a good piece of that right L face mask. And with that, he'll tack on another couple of yards after that 25-yard return by Patrick Jenkins. Okay, it's going to add on, going to tack on, tack on 15 from there. And that's a good use of 15-yard penalty because that's a very dangerous tackle when you grab that guy's face mask and pull him down like that. The end of the run for sound. So with that 15-yard penalty, Tennessee State will have the football in great field position as they are out at the 43-yard line now. Still a quarterback is Riley Walker, the sophomore. Got eye formation behind him. And he gives it to Sugar Sanders. Sanders with the carry picks up about five yards on the play. And James McGowan, again, being active defensively for Jackson State. We usually see one of those linebackers start to elevate his game in games like this. No question about it. He's right there in the middle of your screen, McGowan. He's just going to come right up and meet Sanders right there, fighting <laughs> off the block from Cooper. That's big-time middle linebacker play when you can fight off those, those big uglies from the old line <laughs> and find your way to the running back. You don't call them big uglies in the huddle, do you? No, nah, I don't call them big uglies when I'm up here. I'm in the booth. <laughs> He picks up four yards on the play, make it five. It'll be second down and five. Now another timeout on the field. As both teams go to their respective sidelines, and there's a good look at Walker. So Riley Walker and Tennessee State looking for an answer. We'll see if they have it when we get back. Welcome back as Tennessee State, the first of five straight road games for this season. And by the way, Tennessee State is playing 12 games during the regular season this year. First time in school history that's happened. But right now, if you were to ask every man on the sideline what they're thinking about, it's not the rest of those games, it's Jackson State, who they trail now 7-3. Here's Walker on second down and six, still on his feet. Gets close to a first down, and he may have enough yardage for one. You, you, you have to ask, what is it going to take for one of these guys to step up and be the man as the quarterback for Tennessee State? And right now, Walker's doing a nice job of keeping his poise in the football game. He's completed a few passes. He's been a little erratic throwing the football, but he's doing the things that he needs to do. He's moving the chains and keeping Robert Kent on the sideline. As long as he does that, he'll be okay in this ballgame. 
and he'll be okay, I would assume, for the rest of the season as Coach still tries to make his decision. And you got that big smile Jay, on your face. Jay. You don't think Coach will ever no, make his I, mind, I, huh? I asked him yesterday, who do you think is the man? Who's the guy that's going to take your team? He said, not, not one of these guys yet has stepped up. So here's Walker in shotgun formation. Balls at the 46-yard line of Jackson State. Oh, looking over the middle for Jenkins. And I think Jenkins got some short arms on him Yeah, now. that's called alligator arms. And that time, Jenkins, he, he had no, no reason to do that. He had really no one in his face. But he pulled him in real quick. He's got to help his quarterback out and make this call. Hey, listen, you're going to get hit anyway. He's right in front of Giddens, the, the, the corner. He's got to make that catch no matter what. You're going to get hit anyway, they tell you. Well, see, he's, he's only 5'6", so he was really stretching the arms. Why are you dogging? Why are you dogging the short You know guy? I'm not going to get into the short guy thing. Please don't. Second down now. High formation. This time they give it inside to the big fullback. And that's Adam Lindsay. He too is just a freshman. He's from Smyrna, Tennessee. He was tackled by Arthur Sample after picking up maybe a yard on the play. There's a good look right there at Adam. That's his second carry of the season. Yeah, he's got that neck roll. Look at him. He's got that neck roll just like a fullback. You better take that neck roll off before they put him at the <laughs> linebacker spot. <laughs> Third down now and nine. Here's Walker. Good protection. Oh, and a good defensive play there. Making a move on it was Vince Davis, the senior from Sturgis, Mississippi. And that forces a fourth and ten. And Tennessee State will come out and punt the football. And that means Joey Hudak, the sophomore from Miami, is back there to punt. Hudak, who averages 36 yards a punt. I think Johnson is standing back on his 10-yard line. Johnson fields the punt and immediately he is met by Kenyell Morgan. That's going to be the halo rule, which this year is a 10-yard penalty. So it's not it's not the five yards, it's a 10-yard penalty this year. The halo violation of the halo rule has got to give them at least two yards to catch the football. And now they're discussing another penalty. And by the way, check that Bilal Davis was the defender on that play. He did a good job covering the punt. Got a halo violation on the kicking team. Be 12 yard from the spot of the infraction. First down. See, that's Bilal Davis. He's, he's got to give him that, those two yards to catch that football. And they've, and they've moved that this year and made it a 10-yard penalty. And when they say halo, they're talking about sort of an invisible arch surrounding and we are back in Memphis. Tennessee State, Jackson State going at it. Southern Heritage Classic in Jackson State with a 7-3 lead and the football. Robert Kent drove his team 72 yards last possession. See if he can do it again. This time he dumped it to Manning. Manning's still on his feet. He's getting near midfield. A flag's been thrown. He's finally brought down at the 44-yard line, but when they throw it that far downfield, it may be a bad loss. And you start to see what Robert Kent can do when he takes advantage of some defenses that get that they start to change up the defense. And that time, Tennessee State came with a little bit of a blitz, and that opened things up for, for, for Manning down the football field. Unfortunately, it looks like you're going to have a holding call that's going to bring it all back. Well, the flag looked like it was thrown downfield, so I know it can't be... It must have been thrown on one of the guys downfield making a block because it looked like it came late. If you look, yeah, it, it, it's hard to see when you look at, we get a call from the official. A legal block in the back on the offense. Be 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. You know, George, I'm looking at where the, where the, the penalty is, where the flags are, but there, there's the hole right there. Yeah. You, you see what's going on. He's got to pull down from the back, and there's the illegal block coming from the back further down the field. There was actually a hold and the block. And Tory Ross, just a freshman, puts his team 
back at the line of scrimmage where the ball now is at the 25-yard line. They're going to give it to Nolan, the big boy. The big boy picks up about a yard on the play. Manny Robles among the crew that met him, number 61. You don't want Manny Robles landing on top of you. <laughs> that much I can tell you. They say 270, but... <laughs> And once again, here's Tennessee State making Jackson State go the long way, taking away the big play. First it was the drop pass in the end zone by Manning, now taking away the big play with the penalty from Manning and making Jackson State go the length of the football field. Second down now, make it nine. Manning is the man in motion. Can't three-step drop, finds his receiver, gets a first down, still on his feet and big time yards for Chris Jones. Jonesy, the sophomore, makes the catch, and Jones is averaging 18 yards every time he catches the football. Now I see why. Yeah, and one thing you want to do as a quarterback to get back in your rhythm is let your receivers do all the work. Short short play like that, short pass, but a big game because you have receivers who have the talent to make some moves and get you down the football field. These kind of routes, have four or five different options on that one stem. Every stem for the Jackson State receivers can result in four or five different directions for these receivers. Chris picks up 31 yards on the play. This time they hand it off to Tanaka Counselor, the senior from Clarksdale, who averages 3.7 yards per carry. He was brought down by Jermaine Beal. Good look at Counselor right there, who last year was a first-team All-SWAC member after rushing for 677 yards for the Tigers of Jackson State. Counselor picks up six. So here he is again on second down, still on his feet, inside the 15-yard line. Finally brought down by Gidney. But not before Counselor picks up big yardage on the carry. And this is somewhat of a change-up from what Jackson State was expected to do coming in this ballgame. They're going with a full backfield now with Nolan and Counselor. Now Nolan becomes an extra block, and he gets a nice block there on the corner on the end. And now Safula misses the tackle. Tennessee State can't afford to miss tackles down the football field. 23-yard gain for the seniors. You get a good look at Tanaka. As we have another timeout on the field. Counselor, who I said last year, first team all swack. He's a JUCO transfer from Cahoma Community College. <laughs> Say it three times fast. Cahoma, come on. Come here. Yeah, I, I know I get you. I knew you were going to say it. <laughs> 46 seconds left here in the first quarter. George Johnson, along with Don McPherson, the rest of our BET crew, as we bring you our first black college football game of the season. And we talked about Robert Kent at the top of the show. We talked about the fact that the junior, you know, really knows how to pitch the football. You see him coming from D.C. Yeah, and, and the thing is, he's got so much athletic ability that sometimes he gets himself in trouble, like, like right there, trying to make a play out of nothing. And then he threw the ball a little high early in the game, but then started to settle down a little bit to get that ball back into the hands of his receivers. But the one thing that he's had to do early in this ball game is be the athlete quarterback. And he's had to run the ball a little bit more than you want him to. He hasn't really gotten into that rhythm in this ball game yet. And that's, he's got to settle down. He's got to start throwing those high percentage passes. His numbers really aren't that bad, but he really has not been putting up the kind of numbers that he did in the first few games of this season. Thrown for 76, run for 18 yards. This time, sticking a run, and they give it to Counselor. Big time move by Counselor. Close to a touchdown. He was brought down by Rockman, but it looks like he's shy of six by half a yard. The clock continues to roll here in our first. You know, when you play a team that, that's so fast on the outside, you have a tendency to flow. Watch the guys flowing outside like that. When they have a tendency to overrun those kind of plays because they're so conscious of guys getting outside of them. And this time, the keeper by Kent. And touchdown for the second. One guy is saying touchdown. I haven't seen everybody signal. The linesman saying touchdown. And so is the referee, but not everybody's <laughs> looking at each other like that. It's, it's a Novocaine effect. <laughs> <laughs> no one knows if it's happened yet. <laughs> well, Robert Kent knows it happened as he's 
bouncing towards the sidelines. Touchdown by Robert Ken on the sneak. Yeah, that's what you want from the big boy. Robert Ken has done a great job as being that being that third running back all day. So Ken with the quarterback sneak. He has the point. And it's now 14-3, Jackson State. And here's Robert Kent. He's from Indianola, Mississippi. And what do you think? Well, I think he needs to settle down in the pass game. The one thing I do like right now, you watch him on the sideline. He said, we have to win no matter what it takes. And that, if that means that he has to run the football, he's going to get it done. He knows that his job on this team is not amassing numbers. It's being a leader. And right now, he's showing it on the sideline. He's showing it on the field. How about those big old offensive linemen walking over to him and getting a little little love and giving out that love? Old, old linemen love it when a quarterback will drop his shoulder. They love it when a quarterback scores on a quarterback sneak and comes to the sideline and says, yeah, boy, that's how we get it done. And that's what he has to do. He has to step up as a leader and know it's not about him. It's about this team winning football games. Well, they came into tonight's contest 0-2. They opened up the season, and I'm talking about Jackson State, with a loss to Southern Miss. You would almost have expected that. 55-7, Southern Miss is a D1 team that can play. But the next week, they traveled to Greensboro and lost to North Carolina a and in a game in which they were down 35-10, to rallied back in the fourth quarter, but eventually lost. 42 to 36. Yeah, and, and it really, both of those losses don't make sense on paper. Against Southern Miss, they had 20 first downs. Against Southern Miss, 23 first downs. You don't get blown out by that score when you play so evenly in, in a consistent offensive sch scheme. And then you look at you look at the next game, throwing 500 yards, 700 yards of offense, and you lose. It just doesn't make sense on but, paper. But it's what you talked about, the eight turnovers they had in that game. You cannot turn the football over and win games. Carlos Wright with his first chance out of the turn, still on his feet at the 30, spinning and finally brought down at about the 36-yard line. So we've come to the end of one quarter of play, or maybe we haven't. There's a flag that's been thrown on the 17-yard line. But a nice return there by Carlos Wright, the junior from Middleburg, Florida. And holding on the return, so they're going to bring it back. And with the illegal block, they're going to set this ball back deep in Tennessee State territory, which is not good news for a club trailing. Yeah, block in the back, on the run back, 10 yards on the spot of the foul. But also have one untimed down. So that bad block nullifies a 35-yard return by Carlos Wright. Carlos Wright had nothing but green on the opening kickoff, and so far Tennessee State has done a decent job in the kicking game and the return game, but they can't afford these kinds of mistakes that give them such a long field to work with. So we're about ready to start the second quarter. So with one quarter under our belt, Jackson State leads 14-3. Like a good breakfast. McDonald's. So welcome back here to the Liberty Bowl. And now they're marching things back down the other way. While you guys were gone, they allowed Tennessee State to run another play. I guess they assume that you can't end a quarter on a penalty. Although I have, that doesn't I have make a never lot of... seen that before. Not only did they run another play, there was a penalty that was declined, and the clock didn't move. Well, we've got a replay of the play that they ran while you guys were gone. And you had a little illegal motion, <laughs> and it was a no play. So you had a legal motion on the, on the part of Tennessee State. The clock didn't move. Well, and the judge is trying to figure out whose jurisdiction this falls under. Let's give him a minute to figure it out, and we'll all come back in a minute. to buy Pizza Hut, home of the big New Yorker, fit and crispy, pan, stuffed crust pizza, and more. And welcome back, folks. Charles Anthony, the sophomore from Orlando, Florida, getting things started quickly for Tennessee State as we start the second quarter of play. Anthony, who last year was just a tremendous little athlete for this club. 
trying to recover from injury. And a nice run right there. Yeah, and it's, that's what he needs. He needs a little bit of, of a confidence boost to get those big kind of plays, to get his confidence back. Of course, he's competing with Sugar Sanders. They're a good one-two punch in that backfield. Another flag on the play. So now they haven't even moved the sticks yet. The ball's marked at the 30-yard line. Yeah. Now they're moving it. I think the officials called the flag on themselves that time because they, they're not sure what they're doing. I think one guy threw it on the other guy. Get it together. So now it's first and 10, balls at the 30. Double tight end set for Walker. His lone set back again. As Mr. Anthony, and he's met quickly by L.D. Archie. Today's first quarter stats brought to you by Pizza Hut, home of the big New Yorker, thin and crispy, pan, stuffed crust pizza, and more. And you see your numbers, first downs, Jackson State with nine, PSU's two. Passing yards, going to Mr. Kent, rushing yards, going to his crew, but no turnovers. Yeah, that's, that's the thing that Jackson State's very happy about, getting out of that first quarter. So now here's Walker. This time, he dumps it off to C.J. Johnson. But credit Mr. Woolard, yep. the safety with reading that. And that's Lamont Woolard, number 25 right there, who just, they call this sniffing out the screenplay. When you see those, those defensive linemen get that free rush into the backfield, Lamont Woolard sniffed out the screenplay and made a nice tackle right back at the line of scrimmage. They say Willard reminds a lot of folks of Rashard Anderson, the former cornerback here three years ago, who was drafted in the first round by the Carolina Panthers. He's kind of built like Merton Hanks did. Got that long neck. I long. sure hope he doesn't start shaking that neck around like Merton. <laughs> so here's Walker. Play action. Gonna keep it. Try to get past the linebacker, finally driven out of bounds at about the 36-yard line. He'll still be shy of a first down by four yards. And there's McGowan once again has been very active in, in, in this ball game with so much talk of Elgin Andrews. McGowan has been the guy who's been very active in the backfield and down the field. McGowan just a sophomore from Hernando, Mississippi. Came in the third leading tackler on this team. But now it's fourth down in four. So Hudak will punt the football. And Johnson is back deep standing on his 25-yard line. Hudak averaging 36 yards a punt. Johnson going to let this one bounce. It's the Tennessee State bounce. He's going to be finally down at the 31-yard line. A 33-yard punt for Hudak. 13-15 left here in our first half. And it's been all Jackson State so far. And welcome back. It's Jackson State with a 14-3 lead. Has the football. You know, last year in this Southern Heritage Classic, I mean, this was a game that had 945 total yards between the two of them. And Jackson State lost that football game and not very happy at the end of it. I'll tell you more in a second. Kent on first down, throwing downfield. Pass is incomplete. And you see, you see Kent give that little hop step there? He was telling himself, I have to set my feet. He's saying, that's my fault. I have to set my feet and throw the football. He's got nice protection, nobody in front of him, but he doesn't get his feet around. See how he's, he's square when he throws the football? He knows they didn't get his feet around because he had an opportunity deep down the field. Watch him give that little hop step like, I got to get my feet around and throw the football. But last year, as I was saying, Tennessee State won this game 64-33, to 33, but... Jackson State left that game thinking that Tennessee State had run the score up on them a little bit. Inside handoff goes to Nolan, and it goes nowhere. And Nolan got met right in the middle of that by number 52, Beal, coming from the left side of your screen. It is 50, it is Beal right here in the middle of your screen. He's just going to come up and smack Nolan right there. Nice play of sniffing the ball out, finding the hole where the back is going to go by Beal. Getting a good feel now as to why Jermaine Beal averages nine tackles a game so far this season. He seems to have his face everywhere. Yeah, he's very athletic. He runs the field sideline to sideline very well. That's why they expect him to be an asset against Jackson State because he can cover in the secondary. Last year he was a second-team All-OBC selection. 
As it is now third down for Kent. Kent will go back into the shotgun. Three receivers split to the left, two to the right. All by his lonesome. And he gets hit right when he let loose of the football. Pass was overthrown, intended for Chris Jones. But boy, he took a shot. Yeah, and this is where he, those extra 10 to 15 pounds that he put on in the offseason are going to come in handy because he really does take a shot right here from the back. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> you could see and that, that coming. That, and that was Aaron Harris right there, who's still driving him down, putting a little knee on him, trying to drive him down and letting him know that we're going to keep coming. So now with that incomplete pass, Jackson State will punt the football, and Tennessee State trailing 14-3. Looking to counter before the end of the first half. Patrick Jenkins is your... Lone receiver, he's standing back at about the 37-yard line. Hunter is Dominic Addison. This one is going to bounce out of bounds. Too good of a kick as they start to walk it up towards about the 47-yard line. That'll be first down. And after that 19-yard punt, Tennessee State, change. This portion of today's game is brought to you by Pizza Hut, home of the big New Yorker, Thin and Crispy, Pan, Stuffed Crust Pizza, and more. Eleven fifty-six left here in the first half, and Tennessee State trailing by the score of 14 to 3, though they have the football. So far, well now we've got a new quarterback. Kenny Irby is in the football game as he finds Patrick Jenkins on the quick out. And Jenkins picks up about five yards on the play. So there's Kenny Irby, our second quarterback of the evening for Tennessee State. The sophomore from Dale City, Virginia. 6'3", 215 pounder. James Reese wasted no time when, Dick, when he didn't get enough offensive production. Alan Walker going right to Irby. So Irby completes his first pass, makes it second down and five. This time, turns it off to Sugar Sanders. Sanders has a first down. Sanders is inside the 35 yard line. And you wonder Check how that, that's Anthony with the run. Excuse and me. You wonder how backs get so much yards down the field. Great blocking all around. First, you're going to see the offensive line. There's Big Cooper. They're going to get a block on Giddens. And then right there, down the field, right in the middle of your screen, is a nice block by Jenkins. By, excuse me, Jackson, 17, gets a nice block on the corner and allows Anthony to get down the field just a little bit more. Charles, just a sophomore. Last year, as a true freshman, he averaged five yards of carry. Straight out of high school. Here he is in his second season. He's taking another hand off. Picking up another four yards on the play. Finally brought down by Elgin Andrews. Thanks, Dave. Clock continues to roll here in the first half. Tennessee State. Now the shotgun is Irby. Quick release. Passes in and out of the hands of his intended receiver, C.J. Johnson. There were a whole bunch of white shirts around C.J. Johnson that time. I don't know if that was a, a pass that Irby really should have thrown, but he had three receivers to one side, so he figures he's going to get that, that single coverage or a little lighter coverage to the weak side, but he had lots of guys out there underneath, underneath Johnson. C.J. Johnson, who just got a good look at, is the leading receiver on this team. But his miss now starts the clock with 11.06, and he makes it third down. Looking for the screen. Finds Anthony. Anthony did a good job to elude a tackler and get a first down. He was stuck, and then, out of sheer determination, got himself a first down with the second effort. Yeah, and he had Bobby Mays, number nine, the defensive tackle, right on his back. And I don't know how he got away from, from Mays. Mays, the big boy who, who couldn't get his grips on him. But so far, Anthony's doing a nice job of keeping Sugar Sanders on the sideline. So Tennessee State gets the first down. Ball's at the 22. 
Irby doing a good job so far in his first drive of the evening as the quarterback for the Tigers. This time he gives it again to Anthony, and nothing doing as the defense surrounds him. The boys, number 93, is in on the play, as is Richard Sloan, number 96. You know, with Anthony running the ball so well right now, and you're going to, they're going to two tight ends, and, and they're blocking, the, blocking very well downfield. You wonder, there's a good look at James Reese. You wonder what he's thinking when he starts moving quarterbacks in and out, and and how long it's going to take before he decides to settle in on one of these guys, give him a full game, so that he's not looking over his shoulder and worrying about every little mistake that he makes in the ball game. Reese has done a good job of building offenses here at Tennessee State. Over the last three years, his offenses have averaged 438 yards a game and 31 points per contest. So I would assume that it's safe to say James Reese knows how to coach offense. Well, he, he definitely knows what he wants to get done. He has a, a very specific agenda in mind and what he wants to see out of his quarterback. And really, there is not much of a difference between these guys. The one thing that he's looking for is that one of them steps up and kind of sticks his chest out and says, this is my team. And that's mm -hmm. exactly what he's looking for. I think it's important to note that the teams that he plays early on in the season from the SWAC don't play the same kind of football they play in the Ohio Valley Conference. Which gives him a little bit more luxury with his quarterbacks. Here's Irby. Pass is complete as he finds Carlos Wright. Wright spins and falls at about the 17. I don't care which one of you guys. They're all pretty tall guys who can stand back that time. Irby looked very comfortable in the pocket and threw the ball with nice velocity. All these guys do have a lot of ability. So after the catch, it's going to bring up a third down. Third and five for Tennessee State as the clock continues to roll here in the first half. Three receivers, four receivers make that to the right. Just one receiver out to the left as they give it to right. Right, picking up first down yardage. Taken down at about the six. Make it first and goal for Tennessee State. Tennessee State taking a page out of that Jackson State offense. You bring in four or five receivers and then spread them out vert vertically. And this time, Irby gets the ball to right. This is just like a run play. This is a quick handoff outside, outside the formation and gives right the ability. A guy who's a kick returner, so he knows how to run in space. That's just like a handoff. It's just like a run play. They do count it as a rush, in fact, because of that the way the play was designed, so it'll be a carry for him in the stat book. Tennessee State is knocking at the door. Tennessee State trailing 14-3, but it is now first and goal for them inside the 10-yard line. They've marked it at the 6. 8.44 left here in our first half. And I know the Tigers of TSU would love to get in the end zone. Being this close, and they're getting even closer, thanks to Charles Anthony, who has run the ball well here on this drive. And I'm, I'm really impressed with the way TSU is blocking right now. You see them pulling with their lineman, but you see right there, the fullback, Gibbs, coming your way. Nice block there on the corner, and allowing Anthony a seam to get up into, into the gap and push that ball towards the end zone. They're doing a nice job of blocking for Anthony up front. The fullback, the, the, excuse me, the receivers, everyone's doing a nice job of getting blocks, getting a hat on a hat. Unofficially, we have Anthony up in the booth with... Carried the ball for 39 yards thus far. Full house backfield. And they give it to the fullback. And it looks like a loose ball inside. That was Ricky Gibbs with the handoff and the touchdown. So the sophomore from Miami, Florida, gives Tennessee State another six. You saw Gibbs with the block. Now you see him with the ball in his hand. Nice. Nice little Walter Payton style jump over the over the line and please <laughs> do not compare <laughs> yeah, him to well, sweet this. Come on. Okay, well, for Jackson State, I'm thinking Walter oh, Payton. You know what? I'm a shut up. I'm a shut up. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know all the Jackson State people out there saying, but he's from Tennessee State. That's right. Hudak attempting the point after. 
and the kick is up, and the kick is good. That drive took four minutes. They went 50 yards, get another seven, and now cut that lead to 14 to 10. Yeah, and that's the Tennessee State game plan. Long drives on offense, and make Jackson State go the length of the field. Time now for today's trivia question, brought to you by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Now, what was the highest scoring game in Southern Heritage Classic history? And who accounted for the most touchdowns? I already told you. I already told you. Welcome back as Tennessee State has cut that Jackson State lead to four thanks to a 10-play drive with four minutes. So now they'll kick off to JSU with 7.56 left here in our first half. Johnson is your deep man. And we get a good look at Joey Hudak kicking the football off. Going to come up to the short back on that one. Making the return to Naka Counselor. Well, here's another look at that trivia question. Think you might have the answer? The answer brought to you by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. And the answer is last year's game. Tennessee State scored 64, Jackson State 33, a total of 97. And in that ball game, Shannon Harris, the quarterback of Tennessee State, was absolutely outstanding as he throws six of his seven touchdown passes in the first half. He was 23 of 46 for 360 yards, one INT, and as I said, TSU wins big, 64-33, but he was thrown late in that ball game, and Jackson State has not forgotten that. They said you had to win, and you kept on throwing it in our face like that. We're getting you back this year. And it is personal. And Jackson State, with possession of the football, tries the interior of that defense and gets little to no yardage on the play. And, and Jackson State's going to have to get a little bit more personally involved in their offense if, if they expect to, 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 keep, to win this ball game and get back for last year because they're really not getting a rhythm going in their offense. That was Nolan with the carry, and he picked up maybe a yard. As the clock still running, we approach the seven-minute mark here of our first half in our second quarter, actually. In motion. There's Kent. A little bit of time. Throws it over the middle. Pass is complete to his receiver. And that catch was made by Cletus Gordon. Gordon picks up great yardage, although Robert Kent took another shot in the backfield. Yeah, well, Robert Kent's going to show his leadership ability in this ball game because he's going to take a lot of shots and has been taking a lot of shots there. Once again, he's going to take a little bit of shot in the neck, but then gets dragged down, and that should be a penalty right there. That should definitely be a penalty when he gets dragged back late. And you see these Jackson State receivers are so good in space. They're big, tall, physical receivers who can do things well in space. And Gordon picked up 30 yards on that play, as that time they handed it off to the big guy, Lawrence Nolan. And Nolan, a little upset with himself because he thought he... Yeah, a lot more yards than that. Yeah, that was definitely what they call a shoestring tackle. You look at Ken, he's holding on to his back there. He's kind of doubling over a little bit. When we talked about leadership at the quarterback position. This is what it takes. You have to be able to fight back on the injury. You have to be able to fight back on the late hits. And show your team you're willing to, as they say, take one for the team. He's showing it right now. How about Cletus Gordon with two receptions for 44 yards for Jackson State? Just another one of the many receivers. And, I mean, they've had many here at Jackson State that kept the ball and make plays, although that one should have been caught by Torrey Ross, but he couldn't bring it in. And you see right there what it takes to be a leader and a quarterback. This time, Kent throws the ball right on time. Giddens is too. He has nothing to do with that. Ross has got to make that catch. That is what, what puts your quarterback number one in the conference, number one in Division I AA, and he has got to come up with that catch. It goes back to what he said on our air earlier in the game. I've got to learn to trust these guys. I've got to, you know, gain, I would assume that has a lot to do with the trust factor right there. It has a lot to do with the trust factor, and he can't, he can't be afraid to get in the face and say, you guys better step it up and talk, start catching the football. So here's Kent now on third down, dumps it to Manning. Manning's got a first down and more, dropped at about the 19-yard line. It looked like Jermaine Bill is the guy who came up and made the play, getting help from Ahmed Fateula. Yep. 
where you, you get three receivers to one side, and then one of these guys is going to come back inside and make a block right there. And that's going to give, again, it's just like a run play. Here comes Cleese. Sorry, he's going to come outside and get a block right there. Two guys go up, one guy comes down the line and makes a block. And they get a first down at the 19-yard line, first and 10. Look at the set here. Four receivers to the left, one to the right, so and they're going to him. Kent looking for his receiver, and Cunningham makes a big-time play. That's that ISO you talked about. They tried to get Jacobs all alone with Scott Cunningham, and he made a great play. Yeah, and I asked Asbury, Coach Asbury, why do you put one guy to, four guys to the boundary? This is just good defense by Cunningham. What Cunningham does right there, he turns his eyes at the last minute. As long as he turns his eyes and looks up for the football, it's not pass interference. That was Excellent close. play by Scott Cunningham. Oh, yes, it was very close, but just at the last minute, when he saw the receiver's eyes go up, his eyes go up, no P.I. So the key to that is technique. If you just, if you demonstrate the right technique, you can beat the officials as on that play. As, it's not beating the officials. As long as he turns his eyes okay. and looks up for the football, he's an he's a eligible receiver. That ball is up for grabs. So as long as he turns his eyes and, and tries to locate the football, it's not passing the field. Incomplete pass makes it second down now on 10. <laughs> Kent, inside handoff, the counselor, nothing doing. Robles was there, but the first man to make the play for Tennessee State was Robert Davis. Yeah, Robert Davis has been impressive so far in between the tackles. He's a big guy, but he slashes down the line very well. Good feet for a big guy in the middle of, of that of defensive line. <laughs> Southwest Airlines presentation of black college football here on BET, and it has been a goodie so far. 14-10 is our score. Really not the game we expected. Not the high-scoring game we expected, but both teams have done a nice consistent job of moving the ball down the field. And we wanted it to be close, and it is. Kent looking in the end zone. Oh! Another play by Cunningham. It was in his receiver's hands, Gordon, and Cunningham made the play to knock it out. Yeah, and Kent's a little frustrated, I think, because he knows he was a little bit late on that throw. Right there in the middle of your screen. Watch him. He's open now. Throw it now. The ball's a little bit late. That allows Cunningham to catch up and break up the pass once it was in the hands of Gordon. Again, a nice defensive play by Cunningham of getting that ball, waiting for the ball to be in the hands, and then, and then breaking up the catch. And you got a chance to see Cletus Gordon there as now they're going to attempt the field goal. Asher Ashley from 36 yards out. Kick is up. And the kick is no good. It's off to the left. That is a big stop for TCU. And that, when I talked yesterday with Andre Kramer, the defensive coordinator, he wanted them to go the length of the field and keep him out. And that's exactly what they did in that drive. It was an outstanding job by the TSU defense. And welcome back to 13th Annual Southern Heritage Classic. We're on BET. And the last drive for Tennessee State, they had the ball eight plays, 50 yards, and yet they come up with nothing. You know, and this is a this is a passer's night. I'm, you know, for Robert Kent and these quarterbacks, it's so sticky and hot. That ball is nice and sticky. They, these receivers should be holding on to that football a little bit better. I formation. And now a little flea flicker. And Irby looking downfield. Oh, and they got to throw a flag on that one. Pass was intended for number 17, Ron Jackson. But there were three defenders around him, and it looked as if Jackson was pulled down. Yeah, well, Kenyo Morgan, you know, it doesn't matter if you look up, if you're looking up, if you're looking down, if you're saying hello to your mom on TV, when you grab <laughs> the guy by the neck and pull him down, it's pass <laughs> interference. And that's exactly what Kenyon Morgan, number 20, did on that play. Watch him. He's just going to come down. He knows he's beat to the inside, but he just grabs him by the neck and pulls him down. That's pass yards, interference. The and there really spot. was no Push need down. to do that because he had decent coverage on the receiver. Which means the flea flicker didn't really... The flea flicker made a bad <laughs> one. Did. He knew he was behind and had to catch up. Again, they were upset. That was one of the things they said. They said they threw that flea flicker on us last year when they were beating us big. And 
And Tennessee State's answer to that is, hey, listen, you play football for 60 minutes. That's right. We're going to try to score every time we get the football, whether we're up 20 or not. First and 10 after the penalty. Ball's at the 35-yard line for Tennessee State, who trails 14-10. This time they hand it off to Sickle Sanders. Sanders picks up about 15 yards on that play. Well, Irby is, is really benefiting from outstanding blocking on the offensive line. You see Farmer right there, the tight end, get a nice seal block on that gives the outside lane to Sanders. And both of these running backs running very hard. You see Sanders spinning and twisting always, shoulders going forward. You'll love to see that in the back no matter what happens. He's going forward. You said that he's, he's benefiting from some good blocking on the line. Do offensive linemen change depending on the quarterback? Do they, get, do they have a different way of attacking the defenders when that happens? What's your answer in a second? Irby dumps it off to the tight end. Look at big Anthony Brown. Aaron on his feet. And ask him to get off of it. And you know, it doesn't matter what who, who's in there at quarterback. When the whole team is playing like this, it's going to make the guy behind center look good. This is all just heart and determination by Brown. Look at him dragging guys. Guys who had shot to tackle him earlier coming back for another chance. He's just dragging guys down. That gets the entire team fired up on the sideline and back in the huddle. I, I thought that he was on his way to the bus and they still were trying to tackle him. As you get a good look at the freshman from Nashville. He's made two receptions so far in this ball game for 17 yards. He now has three on the season. Second down and two. Irby going to throw it downfield. Oh, boy, and another flag. Pass was intended for C.J. Johnson. And another flag on a defensive back. This time they're going to get Michael Cooley. Well, the one thing we know about Irby is he has a very, very strong arm and likes to throw the ball down the field. He made up his mind right away that he was going to throw the ball down the field deep. And that time, Cooley had decent coverage. And that ball really, as we get the call from the official, that ball I don't think was catchable. I don't think that should have been pass interference. Bill. Defensive pass interference. 15 yards from the previous spot for sound. When the ball is under thrown like that, it's, it's a very dangerous play for a defensive back because he can't see the football. That time, I don't think that was pass interference. That ball was under thrown and outside of the receiver. If anybody fully was the closest to the football. But be that as it may, called for another penalty, so the ball moves down to the 26-yard line where it's first and 10 for Tennessee State. Sugar Sanders trying to get to the outside. Good cutback move. Oh, boy. Hard. As he took a shot or two. Sugar Sanders carries for TSU. Elgin Andrews among the group of guys there to make the stop. Coming right at you. 65 Cooper. Look at him. Watch him get the block. Nice block to seal. Give him the running back to the outside. The offensive line is doing a great job of pulling, getting out on the perimeter, and sealing and offering, giving back lane on the outside. And that's, that's a workmanlike day right there. 4.4 4. 4 carry. That's what you want. Get those first down. Little by little. Picked up five on that one. He's the lone setback on second down and five. Double tight end set. Quick pass. Complete. Johnson on his feet. Inside 10. George, they call this the bubble route. Again, it's just like it. It's just like a run play. You put your inside receiver, Johnson, you give it to him right away. Look at all that space there. He's the inside receiver with no one in his face. That gives him plenty of space to make decisions to where the to run with the football. And then he gets a great block down the field. These receivers, Ron Jackson, do a tremendous job down the field, blocking for receivers and running backs. First and goal. Ball now is at the eight-yard line. Trying to pitch it outside of Sanders. Oh, he's got a hole. He's got a hole. Touchdown, Tennessee State. Sugar Sanders from eight yards out. And the Tigers of TSU regain the lead. Not the ball game we expected. Tennessee State making it a goal line to goal line game. And for Sanders, that's his first touchdown of the season. And the point after, if good, will put Tennessee State back up 3-0. 
these 17 14 which is three nothing where they started how about Irby and the way he was able to drive this football team downfield he's been very very consistent very safe throws he's been throwing nice safe throws little bubble pass short passing game he's been very consistent but he's had two passing appearance calls that moved him down the football field who that who that who that hits that and so now they lead by three and, and here you go again you're going to see these guys blocking down the field you look, look at the blocks right there by by jackson and then by farmer the tight end nice blocking down the football field this entire drive by tennessee state but you can't ignore the pass interference calls that have been part of the tennessee state offense absolutely but you did talk about the fact that even the offensive line looked like they had a little bit more pep in their step defense will be declined extra point uh, good there was a penalty on the extra point and it doesn't matter because it was declined and so tennessee state leads 17 14. Robert Kent will have two minutes and eight seconds to try to answer before the end of the first half. When you talk about the Tennessee State team kind of coming alive with Irby in, in the game, what happens is when a guy comes in the game and you make a quarterback change, everyone psychologically is thinking, now something good is going to happen. And that's exactly what happened. You get a couple of first downs, you start to move the football field. Football players, athletes of any sport are... are psychological beings were superstitious creatures so as soon as something good happens they start to feel that fire yeah right, we can right. get it going with the quarterback change it's going to make it happen so that's that's that emotional shift you see when he comes in the football game and good things start to interesting happen interesting point you bring there because what that comes down to is maybe not the quarterback deciding as to who becomes the starter but the rest of the team deciding in terms of who they relate with and work with better if you don't think that james reese is watching the reaction of the team and you don't think these quarterbacks are also watching mm -hmm. the reaction team. And that could be a reason why no one has really stepped up because they're a little apprehensive about, you know, ticking off some teammates or not sure that they have the full support of their teammates. So Michael Johnson will return the kickoff for Jackson State, who went from being 14-3 up to 17-14 down. How quickly things change in this football game. Still got a couple of minutes left here in the first half, though. And that ball is going to go out of bounds. Penalty, and they'll start play now. First and ten. And the ball will be marked up at the 35-yard line. Just want to remind you, coming up, our Southwest Airlines at the half, and we'll have both bands, which is required watching Party time. here on BET. Also have our first half highlights. I got a feeling that's when you start to entertain. No, I don't entertain. I just talk. Is that the all bands, it is? The bands will is that all it is? Yeah, stay tuned for the band. Look at them. They're stretching. They're getting ready. Yes, they are. I think they know they're on TV. Yeah, they're stretching, getting a little extra water, making sure that they're hydrated. <laughs> so, it's hard, it's hard work down there carrying that tube in this heat. Yes, it is. Kid yourself. Hard work carrying a flute. <laughs> 35-yard line, Jackson State is at. And you get a good look right there at Robert Kent. You know, Kent, 49% of his passes, or excuse me, 59% of his passes completed. And he's thrown for 727 coming in. But he had six interceptions. And that's uncharacteristic of Robert Kent. And those numbers right there are uncharacteristic. And those interceptions have plagued him most of his career. And, you know, they attribute it to his, his throwing motion. He's not releasing the football on time in his release point and starting to sail on. So he really has a lot to work on despite all of his gifts. So here's Kent now, first and 10. Rolling, he leads one tackler. Finally driven out of bounds by Jermaine Beal. Not before he picked up seven yards on the play. I know Robert Kent wants to be a leader and he's going to make it happen no matter which way it has to happen. But one thing he will do is he will get a little bit frustrated if he, keeps, if he has to keep running the football the way he is in this game. He wants to throw the football from the pocket. He's been getting hit and he's been forced to run the ball down the field way too much. How much do the drops have to do with that? He's had a couple of drops today and maybe not feeling confident to go to his receivers? No, I think, you know, if a guy's open, he's open. You have to let it go no matter what. There's Kent now on second and three. This time, nice little move as the ball is caught. Receiver gets out of bounds, and they're doing a good job getting out of bounds. That was Torrey Ross with the catch. Giddens defensively. And they stopped the clock with a minute 43 left. That's that two-minute drill. 
and this is where that no huddle offense becomes a bit of a hurry up offense and they're used to calling plays at the sideline every player on the field is with the exception of the offensive line backs and receivers are responsible for getting the signal from the sideline so it, it does help them in the hurry up situation because everybody knows what to do from the call at the bench Lawrence Nolan is your single setback and they give it to him up the middle he runs over a couple of players this is some good hard running in this football game minute and a half left in the first half clock continues to roll doesn't stop unless you get a first down yeah, and you get the sense that jackson state is really not quick and they really don't have a confidence a lot of confidence in what they're doing offensively they have first and ten in a two-minute situation and they're going to draw so this is a team that throws the ball down the field loves to throw the ball down the field they're very good at it but they're not doing it right now they seem a little hesitant offensively second down and two Bowman throws to the sideline pass is caught First down. Big time play by Cletus Gort. Very surprised that was not a penalty on Sefiula. The free safety came up and gave Gordon a shot as he was backpedaling out of bounds. That's cover two. It's not a, it's not a, a move by, by Gordon. It gets to him. Ah, he's out of bounds. That is a shot. That is a penalty. Late hit out of bounds. And Sefiula got away with one right there. But here's Jackson State moving the football downfield. That was good for 23 yards. They've done a good job of getting the football to the sidelines, making the catch and getting out of bounds to stop the clock. Minute one left. I'm surprised Tennessee State was in that cover too when you're trying to keep it. You want to keep everything back inside, but you don't want to give out that deep third. And that's exactly what you need. You, 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 you need to have your safety come over and make the play to get the guy out of bounds. You really want to keep your corners deep and keep everything in front of them in this situation. Remember, this is a team that scored 26 points in the fourth quarter last year. So they do have the big play capabilities and quick strike capability. Absolutely. And again, that's the thing that, that Tennessee State really wants to do is make this a longer ball game and slow the pace down. Again, they're trying to get things in order on the field. <laughs> this is having a tough time today with the clock and where the ball's supposed to be. And finally, get Every, going. Is everybody shrugging their shoulders down there, or just is it my imagination? First and ten. Ball's at the 18-yard line. Jackson State inside handoff. Here's Couchner. Got a little room and got down to the 10 yard line. Beal was there defensively to make the play, as well as Safeula. And you're going to have an overrun. Right side of your, excuse me, left side of the screen. You can see these guys overrun the play upfield like that. That allows Council to come underneath the, the pursuit from the defense when they overrun the play. We've seen that a couple of times so far in this ballgame. Second down and two. Fox still rolling. At 32 and counting. Receiver. He had a man wide open. Just couldn't get it to his freshman, Tory Ross. And Kent is taking him beating, but that doesn't mean that he doesn't have to stand in the pocket and put a little bit more touch on his football and give his receiver. He's going to take a shot in the knee, but he's got to bring that ball down. He's got a man wide open. He's got to bring the ball down in his throwing motion. But he's taking a beating back there, and believe me, at halftime, they're going to talk to that offensive line to show up the protection for Robert Kent. Stops the clock at 27 seconds. Inside handoff, counselor, three. Oh, yeah. Big time play defensively by Rockman to make the stop about three yards shy of the end zone. It was one-on-one -on -one there. Well, one of the reasons Tennessee State has done a, such a good job of putting pressure on Kent is because they've been stunting and they've been taking some angles towards the quarterback. What that does is it opens up the inside run game. As we saw the two last few runs by Counselor, they're seen on the inside because they're taking an outside, an outside attitude on their rush, trying to get to Kent and keep him from being effective in the pass game. And the Jackson State fans giving their team and the applause is they're very happy at the way they've moved this football downfield. You see Harris take that outside, then Myers. They're all coming from the outside in. And that time, Council almost lost the football as Rockman was able to bring him down right at the line of scrimmage, saving a touchdown. So 15 seconds left. The ball is marked at the one-yard line. And, boy, it didn't take long. Well, I think, thankful for Tennessee State, it, it took most of the most of the half before they start to get any kind of momentum <laughs> going. Well, they started this drive 2.08 on the clock and still got 
15 seconds left here. It's going to be interesting to see what Kent and the guys do. One would assume they're going to give it to the big guy, Lawrence Nolan, and try to make a play. But the fact is, with no timeouts, I don't know if they can take the risk if he doesn't get in with the clock running and being able to get a playoff. Well, they've got enough time for two, maybe, maybe three plays here. Well, actually, they've got enough time for two plays here. They can stop the clock if they don't get it on this first down. Okay. Here's Kent. I formation. Giving it to Council. Council eludes one tackler and gets in for the touchdown. It was good penetration by Tennessee State, but they could not stop to knock the Counselor. Yeah, good pe penetration by Beal, who shot, shot the gap and was able to, to make contact in the back here, but couldn't bring him down. And, Again, a nice, nice drive by Jackson State. Move the football, trying to get a little more momentum with their offense. And the ease at which they move the football downfield cannot make James Reese a happy man, the head coach of Tennessee State, because it seems like every time his offense it's gets the ball, here's a kick, it's up and it's good. But every time his team gets the football, it seems that they have to work a little harder to get into the end zone than Jackson State has. Well, and there's Bill jumping over the pile. You, you got to keep your feet if you're going to make a tackle. And he jumped over the pile and missed the tackle, but you're exactly right. And Tennessee State, when they get into the Ohio Valley Conference, this is the kind of football they, they're going to expect to play. That's smash mouth football. So they're playing their game right yeah. now. And if Jackson State gets their offense clicking, it's going to give them some fits in the second half. One would assume that if Robert Hughes can get his running game in order and the passing game will come as well as Robert Ken is, I mean, they should be dynamite once SWAT play starts. That drive took eight plays, 65 yards, and under two minutes 156 they managed the clock well and they got the football downfield and retook the lead and they're up now 21 17 and that's the kind of momentum you take with you into the locker room and i would assume very valuable no question about it coach Hughes will go into the locker room and talk about this last drive talk about last week and what they did in the second half and, and how they came back and, and the explosiveness of this offense he'll try to go in he'll go in there and tell his team listen we're, we're in this thing. We haven't done the things that we can do offensively. And once we do that, we'll start clicking and putting the ball in the end of it. Tennessee State, with a record of one and one now, we'll have one last opportunity. Although one would assume that they'll get the football back, not try anything crazy, take it into the locker room, and have to be satisfied with a four-point deficit. Here's Jenkins on the return, runs out of bounds at the 25. There's seven seconds left here in the first half. And Jackson State has come right back, 21-17, been sort of a seesaw battle when you think about it. In the first, Tennessee State got themselves a 28-yard field goal from Joey Hudak. Then Tanaka Counselor had a two-yard run, and Robert Kent had a one-yard run to answer for Jackson State. That made it 14-3. Tennessee State came right back. Gibbs had a short run to full back. And then another seven-yard run. They took the lead, 17-14. And then Tanaka Council's second touchdown run of the day gives Jackson State the lead. That's where we stand right now, 21-17. And as I said, they'll be happy with that. They'll take the kneel and get out. And already, they talk a little bit. As we said last year, Jackson State was not very happy with the way things went. They felt Tennessee State has put the game up. So here we come to the end of the first half, and Jackson State leads by the score of 21 to 17. So that's the end of the first half. We'll have more from Memphis right after this. Succeed. Today's halftime report is brought to you by Southwest Airlines, bringing people together with low fares. And welcome back. And time now for you to sit back and relax as we are at halftime and Tennessee State lead or actually trails in this one, 21 to 17 to Jackson State. Speaking of Jackson State, sit back and enjoy as it's now time for the sonic boom of the South from Jackson State. 
your music director, Dr. Liddell, and of course the chair, Department of Music, right there is Jimmy James. He's also the voice. Let's listen in.
as the sonic boom continues to display excellent variety in showmanship, please be advised that our show is not fiery oratory, but it's ecstatic, stupendous, and the apex of excellence. It always brings about envision. It's time to check the diversity of this vertex of aggregation. Check out the eccentricity of the nation's number one band. The sonic boom moves to Soulsville with the latest in contemporary dance. So Sonic Boom! Welcome back to the Liberty Bowl. It's the 13th annual Southern Heritage Classic. We just heard from the sonic boom of the South, the marching dam in Jackson State. Now time for us to turn our attention to the aristocrat of bands from Tennessee State University, band director Edward Graves. Man. Uh, did I say Bruce? Take a look at the 50-yard line. What you gonna do, Bruce? Hey! Hey! I have stepping drum majors off. Tony Davis, head drum major. And Frank Jump. Today's theme is Memphis, the musical city of three. The aristocrats are dedicated to the halftime show, the one of Memphis, own saxophonist and recording artist, Mr. Hank Crawford.
sophisticated ladies. Get busy, ladies. We'll be back. And welcome back here. Memphis, Tennessee is Jackson State leads Tennessee State 21 to 17 here at the half. George Johnson along with Don McPherson. And when you look at this football game, pretty much going back and forth, back and forth. And we'll take a look at the numbers. But your thought first before we do that. Well, it was a mistake for in the football game. We had a lot of drop passes on both sides of the ball, a lot of penalties on both sides of the ball. And, and neither team really got into a rhythm. We didn't see the passing game from Robin Kent. And it's turned out to be more of a smash mouth game, more of a running game than anything else. Let's take a look at our Southwest Airlines first half stats. These first half stats brought to you by Southwest Airlines, bringing people together with low fares. And what do you see? Well, you see all the penalties, 10 penalties on both sides of the ball, almost 100, 100 yards of penalty, uh, penalties. The time of possession has been very even. Of course, Jackson State has the more high potent offense, and that's why their numbers are a little bit better, but it was a very evenly played ball, ball game in the first half. A look now at our Southwest Airlines first half highlights, and they get things going with Tanaka Counselor. Yeah, and as I said, it's been more of a smash mouth game. We didn't see Robert Kent get the pass game going. We see him running the option nothing else and getting that ball to counter who did a, a good job all day long and then we see Kent going in with the quarterback thinking what's the type of game from Jackson State on the other side of the ball Tennessee State all day long very methodical going down the football field with a good offensive attack running the ball between the tackles and here again coming right back Sugar Sanders with the carry right there to get in and Charles Anthony also did a great job offensively for Tennessee State running the football. Well, the good thing that Tennessee State has done is that they've forced Jackson State to go the length of the football field every time offensively. They haven't been the big plays, and that's exactly what they have to do is cut down the big plays of Jackson State. Well, it looks like Jackson State offensively moving the ball a little easier than Tennessee State. So what do you say if you're head coach Reese and you're, you're thinking about the second half, what do you say to your troops? Well, I think he, both coaches have to say continue to do what we were doing at the end of the first half. I think James Reese on defense has to contain Jackson State. Don't let them, let them get their offense clicking and get those big plays. Jackson State, they're probably saying, you know, last week we came back from a big deficit. We have a high-profile offense, and we can move the football down the field. That's what they have to do. Of course, as you know, we uh, always have our Southwest Airlines Pizza Hut promo. Hey, fans, after the game, log on to BET.com or Southwest.com and enter the final score of the game for a chance to win a trip to Vegas. $1,000 cash and, of course, some piping hot pizza, that courtesy of Southwest Airlines, Pizza Hut, and BET. Once again, it's halftime. Second half right around the corner. Jackson State leads.
Today's halftime report has been brought to you by Southwest Airlines, bringing people together with low fares. And welcome back. The Southern Heritage Classic coming your way. And Jackson State leads 21-17 after two quarters of play. George Johnson along with Don McPherson and our BET crew as you get a good look at head coach Robert Hughes, the head man at Jackson State, whose club has the lead. And offensively, at least in the second quarter, look pretty efficient. Yeah, they, they start to start. They start to click at the end of the half. He's going to try to keep that going, but Tennessee State gets the first shot at so back to receive this kit. This will be Carlos Wright. Wright looking for some running room. Finds none. Is coming up to make the stop is Marcus Kraft. So Tennessee State will begin first and ten at the 23. Of course, the big question is for Tennessee State, who is the quarterback going to be? Would you be surprised if it wasn't Irby the way he played in the second quarter? Well, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised, but, I, you know, you, you never know. You never know what James Reese wants to get done, and I think Irby really did set a fire under this offense. And you look at his numbers, he's very consistent and safe with the football. So Irby now with Carlos Wright, if I'm not mistaken, in the backfield, and they hand it off to Carlos Wright, who's really listed as a wide receiver. But he picks up about five yards on the carry. Yeah, and watching Carlos Wright all day in this ball game, he's been very effective in the return game. He's been effective as a receiver, and he knows how to run the football. That's the type of guy that gives you so much versatility. You can line him up up in the, up in the backfield, but then you can also move him out into a receiver spot. So he's a, good, he's a good weapon for Tennessee State. Well, he has four carries coming in, so that's his fifth of the season, averaging 19 yards per carry. As this time, looking downfield, pass was intended for Ron Jackson off shooting. But the numbers suggest that Wright obviously makes big plays when he does get the football out of the backfield. As you see Ron Jackson, the junior from Detroit. That time, everybody just picked the, the wrong side of the field. He had a wide open receiver to the other side of the football field. And he's got to keep his poise just a little bit more and find the right receiver. So now it's third down and three. Irby now has his tight end. Farmer in the backfield. Going to lead the way for Wright, trying to get to the outside. Wright bounces, still on his feet, close to the 40-yard line, and more than enough for a first down. When you talk about the chess game of a coach, let me tell you what Wright gives you on that play. He gives you just a little bit more speed in that toss to the boundary to outrun the defensive front. And that time, Mays, the defensive tackle, had a nice beat on him, came up the field real nice on him, but Wright's just a little bit quicker than a running back and was able to get outside that pursuit. What does that say to guys like Anthony and Sanders, though, who ran the football pretty well in the first half? Yeah, well, I don't think Wright wants to take the ball from the tackle. Looking downfield, oh, and overshoots his intended receiver, C.J. Johnson. We've got a flag down in the backfield that might go against Tennessee State on a hold. Yes, it will. Well, that was first and ten, so they're going to move them back now, where it'll remain first down. Holding, up and ten yards, previous spot, their first down. When you think about the penalties, Tennessee State came into today's contest averaging 11 penalties a game for 92 yards per contest. You want to bring that penalty number down. Pass was intended for right. Just beyond his outstretched fingertips. McGowan got a shot on Irby, and Irby was barely, it was a barely a three-step drop on the play. A quick pass that really doesn't get you anything at, at first and 20. Doesn't get you much. He still took a shot. So the pass was incomplete. Makes it second down now in 20. Two receivers split to each side of Irby. Here comes McGowan. He's able to elude the linebacker. Irby. Oh, it's intercepted. Jackson State getting the interception and making the play on the ball was number two, Marion Mark. And that was a gift to Marion Mark, who was way out of the play. 
and Irby had no business throwing that ball back inside. You never want to throw the ball across your body or back inside when you're bringing pursuit and all kinds of players that way. Jackson State, it was questioned as to whether the ball was fumbled after the interception, but JSU retains possession of the football. Once you cross the th one plane, once you get out, to, out here, outside the numbers, outside the hash, don't throw the ball back inside. You can't control the football. That ball just floats on him. He was trying to get it inside to his receiver. Mary, Mary Mark was just in the right place at the right time. That ball was just thrown up for grabs. So here comes Robert Kent, 9 of 19 in the first half for 150 yards passing. As he gives it to Tanaka Thompson. Thompson picks up good yardage, close to 15 on the carry, down close to the 20-yard line. Thompson in the first half rushed for 62 yards. His teammate, Lawrence Nolan, rushed for 40. And this is what a run game does when, when your quarterback is faltering. Again, good blocking down there. You see 78 Matthews getting the pancake block. Myers is the first guy to see him 10 yards, 15 yards down the field. They will put they will put counselor on the all swag team. They keep blocking for him like that for the second straight year. Here he is, Kent, rolling on first and ten, looking in the end zone. And his pass was intended for Chris Jones, but good coverage by Tennessee State. Dion Giddens, number two, was there as well as Ahmed Safiullah. And Robert Kent got greedy there. He had his, his wide receiver wide open right in front of him, and he went deep. Excuse me, he had his fullback, Nolan, open right in front of him off the fake. He took a chance to go deep, but he had a man right in front of him wide open. He's got to be patient with the football and take the open man. Second down now. Split backfield behind Kent. Out in the flat. Oh, and in and out of the hands of the defender, Dion Giddens. He overthrew his pass, intended for Tim Manning, and Giddens had a chance. Well, Giddens didn't expect it. You're going to see the inside receiver. That's Manning. Make a nice break to the outside. Look at that ball sail. That ball has been sailing on Robert Kent all day long. And part of the reason is he's not bringing his feet with him. Nice, strong throw there. He's taking a lot of shots. He's got to step into that football and bring his shoulder and his arm forward at the target. He's letting it sail. He's letting it hang. Relying too much on the arm as opposed to his whole ball, body? Well, not just that. He's got he's to release the ball later. And he's okay. got to bring his shoulders and his whole body towards the throw. Third and ten now for Kent and company. Bringing the blitz. And Manning wide open makes the catch. Manning still on his feet and brought down at about the three-yard line. Giddens makes the tackle. Kent. You see this time Kent will probably he gets his feet set a little bit more. Now he's throwing side on him. He whips that ball. He's got, you know, his motion seems to change at times. But like you said, he's got such a strong arm that sometimes he doesn't get his feet set and he doesn't fall through on the ball. So here we are, first and goal, Jackson State, with a chance to extend their lead. Counselor is a single setback and a flag. Can't be delayed. Can it? No, plenty of time on the clock. Dead ball, full start, offense, five-yard penalty, still first down. You never want to see a quarterback with all that green, all those green stains and a Rick shirt. You know, look <laughs> at the Rick shirt over here, and he's got the green stains all over the back. You never want to see that on your quarterback with all those stains on his back. So now it's first and goal. Ball is out at the seven-yard line. They take the hand off the council. Kent. Gonna try to get to the outside, and good job by Beal again coming up to make the tackle. Good upfield rush. With the run game working so well, Jackson State is, is going to the play action pass, pass a lot now in the second half already. And with that Tennessee State rush getting up the field and not allowing Kent to get his head around and find a receiver. And so he has to tuck it and run. And it's been a very effective job right now of Tennessee State not allowing Robert Kent to set his feet and throw the ball down the field. Second down now. Ball is marked at the four-yard line. Kent 
lost control of the football and pounces on it immediately. That'll make it third and goal now for JSU. And Tennessee State would do well to be able to get out of this with no more than a field goal. Yeah, yeah, Tennessee State yeah. is not playing like the football team that, that, that put up 742 yards a couple of, a couple of, uh, uh, last week. And, and, and Irby knows he doesn't want them to convert this because it was his, his interception in the middle of the field that, that put Jackson State in this position. Third and goal. Can't. Oh, he's done that one inside, and the catch not made by Manning, but a flag is thrown. And they may get Cunningham on pass interference. Well, Cunningham had the good position. I'm sure he had the hand in and got it out. But the problem for Cunningham is going to be his right hand. His right hand is going to be on the back of the receiver. In the end zone, the ball would be placed on the two-yard line. First and go. Watch the right hand. It's the right hand that gets the call. It's not the left hand. The right hand gets wrapped around. That's the P.I. call, and the official was in the right spot to make the call. He sees it right away. Exactly. He says, throw the flag. I saw that right hand. <laughs> so now it makes it first and goal at the two. Can't inside handoff. Wow. Nolan. Trying inside, and he met Jermaine Beal, and yeah, Beal yeah, said, yeah, no, sir. Exactly, Jermaine Beal, sideline to sideline, but also right between the tackles, he has been a force. Again, good penetration by the defensive line of Tennessee State, and that, when the defensive line gets penetration, that softens it for the linebackers. That allows the linebackers to come and meet that back right into the line of scrimmage. And Beal, 6'1", 235 pounds. Has been outstanding, the senior from Atlanta, Georgia. He has been all over the field, as you said. We talked about the fact that he's already averaged in the first two games nine tackles a contest. Loved to put his nose in the face of another player. Here's Kent. Looking for some room. They have gotten that room. Touchdown. And Irby, he knows his interception that led that put Jackson State in position for that touchdown. On the other side of the ball, Robert Kent is being a leader today. He's not, it's not pretty, but one thing he's doing right here, he's a little banged up. He's taking it in the back. He's taking it in the knees. He's keeping his mouth. Tuck that ball away. He's taking it to the end zone. If nothing else, his team knows that hurt or not, on his back or not, this kid is going to work for his team and put the ball in the end zone. And we saw him in the first half. Looked like he was favoring his backside a little bit. Yeah, he was favoring, he was limping, he was holding his back, taking a, a lot of shots, even after he the football. But when you continue to put the ball in the end zone, by whatever way it has to get there, the team starts to rally around you. So James Reese now, and his Tennessee State Tigers, Look at the deficit now. Throw to possibly 10. Addison, you attempt it's to point out the kick is up and the kick is good. So now Jackson State increases their lead. They're up 28 to 17 more after this. This portion of today's game is brought to you by Dell Computer. Easy to buy, easy to own, easy as Dell. And welcome back as Jackson State just packed on seven more points and increased their lead to 11 over Tennessee State. 28-17 is our score. Tennessee State, of course, turned the ball over. Was Mr. Kenny Irby throws an interception that results into the results in the touchdown run by Robert Kent. So now here come the Tigers of TSU. Patrick Jenkins takes the kick at his 14-yard line, still on his feet, out past the 40, and finally knocked down at the 44-yard line. 30-yard gain on that kick return. Today's Scholastic Athlete of the Game is brought to you by Dell Computer. Easy to buy, easy to own, easy as Dell. And Bobby Bell, the junior defensive end, 3.2 GPA. And C.J. Johnson has a 3-0 in business management. They represent their respective teams as our Dell Scholastic Athletes. 
38 left here in the third quarter. And Tennessee State now has to do something offensively. Hold on to this football because Jackson State has been in control. Irby looking for time. Doesn't like to scramble too much, but does have that fly and throws another interception. Two straight interceptions for Irby. This one picked off by number 48, Brandon Jones. Irby, it looks like, is still down. Well, George Irby makes a few different mistakes on this play. He wants to go left right away. It's covered. He pulls the ball down. He should take off the run. He's got plenty of room. Look at all this room out here to run. He decides not to throw the football, not to run with the football. And he also has another receiver out there. And then after the interception, he went down to try to make the tackle. And he got hit. He got hit by a block. After the interception, watch. He's going to go downfield. And now he's going to take a shot because now he's a defensive player. Wow. He got hit by Bobby Mays. And those defensive linemen love that opportunity. When they see a pick, they know they have a shot. Take a shot. Well, quarterbacks have to know that when you throw an interception, you're going to get hurt. And that time, Irby was not paying attention. Irby's number 15, right in the middle of your screen. He's going to come one, right, takes one right to the helmet. And he just kind of got hit like a, a prize fighter and goes down. He took a shot in the head from Mays, helmet to helmet. And that's kind of what did it. Mays didn't really get a good clean shot on him. He just took it to the head. And that makes James Reese recent decision to play a little easier a little bit easier because <laughs> you know it's coming by the way correction that was Corey Bonner who made the interception for Jackson State his first of the season but JSU now with the football first and 10 and Robert Kent is looking downfield and Tim Manning had gotten behind the defense but the ball was overthrown it'll be second down and 10. Jackson State has got to give Kent a little bit more help in the pass game. But he's getting a lot of pressure. You see his back taking a lot of hits, and they're trying to run guys vertical down the football field. They have to bring receivers back to him so he can start get, get, getting into a rhythm. He hasn't been in the rhythm all day long. Throwing the ball vertical is not going to get it for him. So it's now second down and 10. With the ball marked at the 38-yard line of Jackson State. Two straight interceptions for the JSU Tigers, and now they have a chance to extend that lead even more. This time, Kent, and you talked about it, the little short dump off, this time to Chris Jones. Jones picks up about eight yards. That's exactly what you have to do. You should throw the short passing game, take the pressure off the, off the defensive rush, and get, get some rhythm going. And there's a guy right now who has a little bit of rhythm, but too bad it's in his head as his head is ringing from that last hit that he took. I know, you know, I want to know. I mean, have you ever been knocked in the head? Yeah, right now, he's, right now he's wondering what's he's, going on. Is that what he's, he has, he's looking at the scoreboard going, hey, how come we're losing 28-17? <laughs> he has no idea what day it is. He never knew he was here, huh? Nope, nope, that has no clue. Josie actually picked up 10 yards good for first down, so it's first and 10 as they hand it off to Nolan and Lawrence. Immediately met inside. And that was Kiwi Woods who grabbed him and wouldn't let go and we talked about the fact that you just might see all three quarterbacks and, and, and look who's warming up now there's, there's Bryson Rosser who, who just knew it was a matter of time you know, you know don't don't take your shoes off it's just a matter of time before you're going into the ball game so we promised you'd see three quarterbacks and coach Reese has not disappointed <laughs> but first his defense has to make a stop Second down now, make it nine, ten. Got a hole, got a little time, ran into his own offensive lineman, and got caught from behind by Manny Robles. Kent is really trying to make things happen. He's done a, a good job with his feet all day long. He's really trying to make things happen. I told you, he's going to start to get a little frustrated having to run the ball so much. That's why he's waiting. He's waiting for something to come over downfield. And as you see, his shirt's out, it's ripped, it's green, he's taking a beat. But that's, I, I guess that's a good thing, because some guys, instinctively just pick it up and start running at least the kid is standing in the pocket and looking downfield he is and again he's going to start to get a little bit more frustrated if he's not having a chance to throw the ball down the field 
Third down now and nine. Robert Kent, again, good protection. Over the middle, wow, big time. And almost coming up with the catch. Free safety was Jacobs. Jacobs. Yeah, the free safety Seppi Uli really gambled on that play. And just missed the, just missed the interception. Right side of your screen, you'll see Seppi Uli, number 28, coming through the screen on the right side, right hand corner. He's gonna come and take his chance at it. And that ball pops out, but they're gonna say he caught the football. Close? <laughs> I don't know. Close? That, ball, that ball seems to be out before he's even on the ground. Are you throwing the red flag if you're in the NFL right now? <laughs> That's right. I don't want to see that again. <laughs> ball at the 35 now. First and 10. Kent. The five receivers. Throws it out in the flat. Completes Chris Jones. <laughs> you look at Scott Cunningham. I mean, he is so worn out. The helmet's falling off. He can't stand up. He's Wait, just worn what, out. I don't know if this is the oh, hit. I hope he's not hurt. The hit that he took because his helmet came off. But I've been impressed with this young man. He plays with a lot of intensity on that corner. And he came up very hard in, in that in that hit. And you see him just keep on driving on court. That is, and then he, he takes it hit from his own man that time coming in from the inside and that was Marcel Goodlow and when your own teammate hits you helmet to helmet yeah, especially when it's behind it. so now it's second down Kemp dropped the football picked up here's Tennessee State still with the football going back the other way the linebacker Finally knocked down, but Brian Harris picked up the football and a turnover. George, I told you eventually it was going to get to him. He's trying to throw the football down the field. The play is not there. He's still trying to throw it. He has to take it, tuck it. That's a, definitely a fumble, and it started with him trying to force the football down the field. He had to realize the play was dead and tuck it away and just try to get back to the line of scrimmage and salvage the play. He keeps that ball in one hand, still thinking he has a chance to throw the ball down the field. And that results in a huge, huge turnover for Tennessee State. Well, it was Aaron Harris who made the hit. Brian Harris picked it up and went 51 yards. And that pitch went to Sanders, and he fumbled the football. Ball is sweaty and sticky. And that ball has just been tough to hold on to for a lot of these guys. It's surprised to have a tough time. Because on a night like tonight, that ball is very sticky. And tight. Plus, they wear gloves with 75 pounds of glue on them. <laughs> <laughs> Second down as Sanders picks up three on the play, make it seven. Here's Anthony and nothing doing. Good job there by the linebacker of Jackson State. Byron Speaks, who didn't necessarily make the tackle, but his penetration he got, caused problems. He got a field and really caused some problems with the blocking scheme there. Sometimes that's the best thing a defensive lineman can do is just disrupt the blocking scheme and allow his other boys to come on in. Coach Reese's club trailing by 11. As we approach the five-minute mark here in the third floor. Go, 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 go! Pass in the end zone, incomplete. Good catch by C.J. Johnson. Bryson Rosser's pass was a little off. Excellent read by Rosser for picking the right guy in that three-receiver scheme. And you gotta wonder, the guy who's been on the bench for two and a half quarters, if he gets this the chance. Here's, the, here's your receiver right here. He's gonna make. Release the ball now. He's a little bit late with the throw, and you have to wonder if sitting on the bench and not getting a rhythm is the result of that. Because it was a nice, it was a good decision, but just a late throw. So now they're going to attack the field goal from 33 yards out. Joey Hudak's kick is up, and it's good. So he cuts that lead of Jackson State to eight points with 4.56 left here in the third quarter. We'll have more from the Southern Heritage Classic after this. And welcome back, George Johnson, along with Don McPherson and the rest of our BET crew as we bring you Southwest Airlines Black College Football on BET. Tennessee State, thanks to this young man right here, Joey Hudak, and his field goal from 33 yards out. 
cuts that lead of Jackson State to 8, 28 to 20. The JSU now with a chance to answer. And they do with Brandon Cox on the return. Guess who makes the tackle? It was Wright. Wright has done a great job on both sides of the special teams. So it'll be first time. You know, Robert Kent coming back on. I want to ask you now, when you were coming up, obviously there had to be some quarterbacks that you looked up to. Did you ever get a chance to work out with any of them before? Never to work out with any of them. But when I was coming out of high school, Doug Williams was was the man. And right. He was a black quarterback, a young black kid. He called me at my house, and it was the greatest moment of my Are young you athletic me? life to have a conversation with Doug Williams. First and 10, we'll go back to that in a second. Kent dumps it off. Pass is complete to Chris Jones. So he calls you up, obviously, and, and what kind of what kind of awards of advice, though, did he give you? You know, it was at a time when black quarterbacks weren't welcome in, in, the, in professional football, or, and there, weren't, there were very few in, in college football as well. And Doug knew that I was being recruited out of out of New York, and, and a reporter called him. He called my house, and we talked. And you know what? What meant more than anything else was the fact that he acknowledged who I was. Mm -hmm. We had a conversation, and he, he became a real person to me. Wow. Robert Kent. Sort of in the same position. Second down now for he and his Tigers. Ball marked at the 42. Inside handoff goes the counselor. Still on his feet. Looking for a seam. Got great speed. Takes it down to about the 20-yard line. Big time run by Tanaka Counselor. 38-yard drop. Counselor had a knack. He had this innate ability to see guys out of the corner of his eyes and make those kind of cuts. See that cut right there? Seeing guys out of the corner of his eyes. Seppi Ola. And now, look, he sees the corner coming. Giddens cuts back across the grain again. Great vision on this running back in open field. You just see, he looks like he's running straight, looking down the ground. Makes a cut right there. Watch him again. Sees him out of the corner of the eye, Makes another cut right there. Very subtle move, but that's what a great running back does in open field. Counselor who now has rushed for over 100 yards. He has 114. We'll have more when we get back. I forgot my ID again. <sighs> Welcome back. It's the Southern Heritage Classic here on BET. The Dr. Counselor just ripped off a 38-yard run to put the Tigers of JSU within the scoring distance again. Now at the 20-yard line. And that's how you answer Tennessee State's drive. They came down, got the field goal, probably feeling good about themselves, and JSU comes right back. So here we are on first down. Kent. Good protection. Look at Manny Rumble. A defensive tackle. Getting through and coming up with the sack. So Kent obviously going down there, but... You know, Kent, obviously, this summer got a chance to work out with one of his idols, that being, of course, Steve McNair, and I would assume that that was big for him. Oh, absolutely. Anytime you get a chance to look at your idol, like, just like if I had a chance to talk to Doug Williams, you look him in the eye, you have a conversation with him, he becomes a real person, and then you think, you know what, I can do it too. Yeah. Just a regular guy like me. But it's a little different, though, because, you know, obviously, with all the young brothers that play quarterback in the NFL, I mean, but McNair is one of those great ones. That's, we get back to action, and that right there is Brandon Cox with the carry. Downs comes up and makes the tackle for Tennessee State. But Kent obviously had a great time in the offseason spending some time with Steve Air McNair. Yeah, and you know, one of the things I'm sure that McNair told him is just what you're seeing from him tonight, and that is do the things that get your team in the end zone, do the things, sacrifice your body, and show your team that you're a leader. And that's exactly what he's doing tonight. And I guarantee you that comes from the types of conversations that he had with Steve McNair. I'm sure when McNair walked in the room, he could tell him he's given up his body several times for his team. Another sack for Tennessee State. As they are getting through, this time it's Keith Rogers, the freshman from Raleigh, North Carolina, who comes in and makes the stop. Yeah, that, that offensive line for Jackson State really has not done a good job. It hasn't been a matter of drifting or stunting. It's just been straight play from the defensive line of Tennessee State. They're not doing too much defense. If anything, they're doing things in the secondary that's causing Kent to hold on to the ball just a little bit longer. But that time, it was just Rodgers beating the offensive line and getting to Kent. So now, here it is, fourth down. Fourth and 18. 
and Jackson State is going for it. Kent, blitz, and drop down. Again, this time, Aaron Harris got three. Three straight sacks, and they turned the football over. And that time they came with the stunt to the three-receiver side, and right now, Dow Asbury is telling you, you have three guys to one side. You have to watch that side, and when the pressure comes from that side, you have to throw the football hot, and that's what Robert Kent didn't do. That's why he's upset with himself right now. He had three guys to one side. He didn't look that side, and that's where the pressure came from. Well, yesterday, we didn't see a whole lot of long field goals during the practice session for, for Jackson State. Although we did see a hard practice. We did see a hard, <laughs> long practice. And, and these guys were focused. And Robert Kemp was very focused with this ball game and, and, and knowing that he had to step up and have a good game. And so far, that really hasn't happened. The big plays have come from penalties and from, and from Tanaka Council. But apparently, they didn't feel comfortable with kicking a field goal, and they turned it over on down. Welcome back, folks, and you just caught Don and I in the middle of a <laughs> you little got screaming it. session because we, we just saw a fourth down and long, and, and you think that maybe Jackson State should have given their young kicker, Dominic Addison, a chance to kick a 45 yard. You have to take a shot at that. You're up eight points. You take a shot at it. What difference does it make? You're, you're down here. You have to give number one the kid the confidence. And number two, what's going to happen later on in the season when he's never attempted one? Right, this? right. But they turn it over on downs because they went for it on fourth and 18. So Tennessee State with the football. And again, a good carry by their tailback, Charles Anthony. I've been really impressed with all of these running backs on both sides of the I ball today, and their balance and, and what they've done with the ball. It, they really have done a tremendous job of carrying the football. And the sad thing is we talked about passing That's the whole right. time coming in. <laughs> we were talking quarterbacks. It's going to be a very little game. And backs have been impressive on both sides of the football. First and ten after the run. And here's Anthony again. Oh, my, he saw that hole. And now, bye -bye. baby, see you. Oh, he's got from behind. <laughs> Willard saved the touchdown. What a tremendous hustle by Willard. He was very helpful early in that play to save the touchdown. <laughs> Once again, you talk about the vision of these backs. There's Willard in the middle of the screen. He's going to eventually make the tackle, but look at the vision. Zeke looking back to the middle of the field, and there's Willard. Once again, he gets passed twice, and finally comes back and makes the tackle. What a great <laughs> effort by the free safety Willard to save the touchdown. 49-yard carry for Charles Anthony. Boy, he hit that hole so quick, too. This guy has a good burst when he sees the scene to take it up the field. This time, Ross is going to throw it accepted. And guess who? The man who saved the touchdown gets the interception, Lamont Wood. And you can see Ross, he's saying, my fault, my fault. You know, Rosser has to know that if you don't have it, if it's not a sure thing, you throw the football away. And he didn't have it. It wasn't a sure thing. It wasn't a smart play call. You have an outstanding run play going. You don't take chances, and you try to get in the scoreboard. Just get the ball in the end zone. Well, Brian Rosser, phone home. The freshman from Hackensack, New Jersey. Right around the corner from you. Yeah, well, he's going to be heading back around the corner from me if he throws another pass like that. And right now, James Reese is probably slapping his left arm saying, bring in the lefty. The, the bullpen's empty. He's got to go with one of these guys. Camp. But, ooh. Was that Jermaine Peel? Yes, it was. <laughs> Putting a knock on Tanaka Counselor. <laughs> Jermaine Beal deserves a game ball. It, well, win, lose, or draw. This guy has made plays all over the field, and he has woken up that Jackson State offense with his hits. Was that a fumble, though? They call it getting a hat on the football. Here he comes, get the hat oh, right on fumble. the football. That's that a fumble. That is a fumble. Picture perfect tackle. Oh, they fumble. got it back. They got it back. Okay. So we come to the end of the third quarter, and Jermaine Bill, yes, you have been counted. <laughs> Jackson State, though, still leads his club by eight. We'll be back at the fourth after this. And we're back as the Tigers, and that's the Tigers of Jackson State leading the Tigers of Tennessee State. 
as you get a good look right there at the head coach Robert Hughes comes in 23 and 13 in his fourth season but his Tigers and another sack Tennessee State has turned up the defensive pressure on Robert Kent and they've come up with four sacks in the last two possessions yeah and what they're doing is they're, they're bringing him pressure from the side of the receivers that he has and he hasn't been able to figure out his young receivers aren't seeing it and they're not breaking off the routes another flag thrown It'll be against Jackson State. I would assume they'll decline that one. Absolutely. But what's happening is that they're bringing pressure. Holding offense. That penalty will be declined. Second down. Tennessee State is bringing pressure from the, the stacked receiver side, whether it's the two, three, or four receiver side, and the receivers aren't seeing the pressure, and they're not breaking the routes off. So you don't necessarily have to go after Kent, but you have to go after his young receivers who aren't reading inside and breaking the routes Co off. Coverage sack. Coverage Co sack. Well, not necessarily coverage sack, because what, the, what it's a blitz. Okay. What's happening is the receivers aren't seeing it and breaking the routes off, so Robert Kent is left standing with the ball in hand. Kent lost 14 yards on that play. Second down now, 24, and they get a big chunk back. Huge chunk back thanks to Brandon Cox. Time now for our Pizza Hut. Third quarter stats. Brought to you by Pizza Hut, home of the big New York thin and crispy, pan, stuffed crust, pizza, and more. And we look at your numbers, first downs. Jackson State has the advantage in passing yards. Although rushing yards, Tennessee State has picked it up again. And the turnovers, last time we looked at this board, it was 0-0. Exactly, the game has got a little bit more sloppy. So now, punting situation for Jackson State. Patrick Jenkins going to field it at the 35-yard line. Take it out to midfield. 15-yard return in Tennessee State now after the 44-yard punt by Asher. So time for another quick break. We'll be back as Jackson State leads by eight. Live and learn, and then get loves. Still a timeout on the field here at the Liberty Bowl where Jackson State leads Tennessee State by 8, 28 to 20. But we've seen three quarterbacks for Tennessee State so far in this ball game. Now it's getting crunch time. You've seen all three. Who would you have on the field right now? I would play, I would go with one guy and I would go with Bryce Rosser, even though he threw that very bad in the end zone in the last series. But I think this is the guy who has all the savvy and the skills you want in the quarterback. And that's what they say about him. So I would, that's the guy I'd go with. And he's still in there. This time he hands off to Charles Anthony. Anthony works his way off tackle for about three yards on the game. It's actually not a bad run as he still has stepped into his time to find a hole. Right. I don't think James Bruce has any other choice but to go with Bryson Rossi for the rest of this game. And I think he's the guy, when you talk to him, he says, this is the guy who has the quarterback savvy mm -hmm. skills. Go with that guy. Give him a chance so he's not looking over his shoulder. He says he's the most complete of them all. He fumbled the football, was able to pick it up and still pick up two yards on the play. Don't think you're going to get changed by Benjamin because he just fumbled the football. I, I actually tried to say he picked up two <laughs> plays because he could have just fell on it and, and got nothing out of it. That's right. That's right. But, I, you know, the position is such a psychological position in the game. Is, it's such a mind game that you have to give a guy the confidence to know that, that he can go out there and make mistakes. He's not going to be yanked. It's just tough, such a tough situation when you're playing musical chairs at that position. Tough situation for him here. Third down in five. Rosser. Bates has a little bit of field. Got a good block from his tight end, Farmer. But Farmer then started to hit the guy in the back, and that may be a penalty on him. Yeah, that's a, a tough call because Farmer was engaged and had a nice block going, but eventually, when it comes to the back, he just probably got a hand on him, which then turns into, into, the, uh, into the holding. I think he was looking for Farmer initially, and then Farmer said, listen, I'll, I'll try to get you a block, try to run for the first time. Exactly. Time. Gave him plenty of room to run, and he took an angle towards the, towards the corner, towards the, the flag, and he could have taken an angle directly direct up the field and gotten the first down. Farmer has position right here, and so right now, he has to go this way. He goes that way, he gets the first down. He's got some pursuit coming from the inside, but as soon as he tries, he tries to go outside, 10 yards, spotted a foul, repeat third down. 
As soon as he tries to get outside of Farmer, then the holding happens because now the position changes and now Farmer, to, to remain engaged, mm -hmm. has to grab. And because it was at the point of the foul 10 yards back, that makes it now third down and 11 as opposed to from the line of scrimmage where it would have exactly. been third down and 15. High formation now behind Ross. Makes the delay handoff over the middle. Wide open receiver. Dickens slips the tackle. Touchdown, Patrick Dickens. Hey! Hey! I'll tell you, Rawson was a great play play because I was looking at the back. I thought it was a draw, especially it's a great play call because third and ten, that's what you're expecting. You're expecting a draw. You see, everyone looked like he had the ball, and now what a great ball on time. Then Jenkins, watch this little burst right here. Boom, he takes it off. So you're not that's catching Patrick great Jenkins. Little burst for that <laughs> man. Sixth in the conference last year in all-purpose yards was Mr. Patrick Jenkins. The senior from Miami, Florida, with the 51-yard touchdown play. TSU now down by just two. And now they've called a little timeout on the side. Are you saying we go for two? Or do you go for one? We'll give them a chance to think about it as we take this commercial break. When we get back, we'll find out what head coach James Reese decides as his team is down two. Good for life. Welcome back. So now we'll find out what head coach James Reese has decided with his team down by two, 12-16 left. Do you kick the extra point or do you go for two? I love the call. I love going for two. I think you show your team what you're all about. Again, Rick, you got to get thinking about later on in the season when you know you have to go for these things in the important ball games. This is a great decision. Full house backfield. They take one way, go the other. Ball's given. Oh, yeah, and I think Anthony got in. <laughs> and from the looks of the sidelines, I'm sure he got in. <laughs> and that was, that was a look of relief more than anything else because that was an outstanding effort by Anthony to cut back in because he had guys in the face right away. How about the call? He has one man in motion one way and goes the other way. I love it. He's got one guy there and he cuts back inside. I'm so impressed with the vision of these of these running backs all day long. They're finding those seams to get first down and get touchdown. Well, how about Bryson Rossa? who throws the 51-yard touchdown pass to Patrick Jenkins, then gets his team in for the two-point conversion, and we're all tied up! Yes, we are back. It's the 13th annual Southern Heritage Classic. Last year, these two teams combined to score 97 points. Don't think they're going to get that high this year, but the fact is, this is a lot more exciting. It's been a great football game. It's been a great football game on both sides of the ball. Lots of mistakes, but both teams are playing very tough. They're playing a good 60-minute ball game. So now Jackson State on the return. And they'll get the football started off at the 27-yard line as we are all tied up now at 28 apiece. And George Johnson along with Don McPherson, when you talk about this football game right here, I mean, has momentum maybe gotten on the side as Tennessee State? I think momentum has been on the side of Tennessee State this entire ball game because the one thing that they've done is that they've played the game that they wanted to play all game long, and Jackson State has not gotten into a rhythm, and that's Tennessee State's game plan. Yeah, but what we do know is that Jackson State has that quick strike capability. We saw it last week when they scored the 26 points in the fourth quarter at North Carolina a &T, and we've seen them do it in this football game. And that's, and that's why James Reese knows that this ball game is not over by any stretch of the imagination. He has to play intense, and you see his defense right now playing, playing very tough and hard right now on the inside, making sure that they continue this defensive momentum. And now Tennessee State has picked up the defense, and you can see head coach Robert Hughes does not have this look of <laughs> you know, comfort right. on his face. I mean, he's now seeing, as you said, the tide has turned. It's becoming very apparent now as defensively they've been knocking these guys backwards the last two possessions. Right, and once again, that Jackson State offense has not found any kind of rhythm, any kind of consistency, and that's got to concern me. Second down now in 13. Kent throws, Kent pass incomplete. 
defensively there, once again, has been Mr. Scott Cunningham. That's right, and, and Deal was in the backfield on the hit on Kent, who ended up once again on the ground. He hasn't set his feet, and that ball is sailing on him. You know, they say a lot of times, even if you don't get the sack, if you just pop the quarterback, make him know you're there, sometimes that's just as valuable as getting the sack. Believe me, Robert Kent right now can name those guys first, last, middle, <laughs> initial. He knows they're there. Third down now for Robert Kent. One of the top quarterbacks in all of black college football. And yet now he sees the momentum turning against his team. Stoppage of play on the field. We have a flag thrown down at about 35. That call came from the back judge. Come out. Tennessee State, the second time out of the second half. There's no flag. Wow, Tennessee State calls a timeout, and you're wondering, in a tie ball game, if that may have come a little too early. We'll talk about it when we get back to Memphis. This portion of today's game is brought to you by Red Fusion from Dr. Pepper. Red Fusion, who's your sofa? And welcome back. It's the folks now on the Sonic Boom is trying to get their club to rally as they are now all tied up. And Robert Kent's third down pass is incomplete. Good coverage by Rachman and Cunningham as the pass was intended for Robert Jacobs. But now Jackson State is forced to punt the football again. So Tennessee State's defense has really picked up the game. They shot now Robert Kent five times, and it all came here in the second half. Yeah, and, and that looks better on Robert Kent. It looks better on the offensive line. But part of that has to go to the receivers as well, who haven't been picking up the blitz and cutting off their routes. Patrick Jenkins, the man who caught the 51-yard catch, is back to receive the punt. And a good job there by Addison to elude the pressure and still get off a pretty good kick. But play by Addison. Not a bad kick. You know, Jackson State has had problems protecting the punter, and they have all 10 guys in blocking. They have no gunner. This should not happen when you have 10 guys in blocking for your punter. They have no gunners on the outside of the field going down. They have to give their punter some protection. Credit Addison with the 45-yard punt. By the way, he's averaging 39 yards a punt, and the talk is, is that the team record for a season is 43. And there is, people feel that Dominic has a chance to catch that, that season record and better it. And keep in mind, he's just a freshman. He deserves a lot of credit for the, that last play, avoiding the big loss. So it's first and 10, ball located on the 36-yard line for Tennessee State as they hand it off again to their tailback, Charles Anthony. And Anthony has just been outstanding. George. All day long, these two guys right here have been doing a great job of coming down the line and kicking out. You're going to see Cooper and Alexander getting down the line and kicking out, getting blocks downfield. Those two big guys have done a tremendous job all day long coming down the line and making blocks. And Anthony has done a great job himself of hitting those holes and, and not being hesitant whatsoever. He has run hard in this one. And they give it back to him, but this time, Elgin Andrews penetrates and trips him up. Elgin Andrews, there's a, a name we really thought we'd hear a lot more from tonight. He's been very quiet. Andrews last year was the conference's leading tackler, and there was talk that here's a guy that didn't get any credit whatsoever right. for his performance, wasn't named first team, wasn't named second team, and yet he just quietly goes about the business of doing his job, but in this game, really hasn't made much of an impact. Second down and 10, as Anthony picked up no yards on that last carry. They give it back to him again. Shifts, maneuvers, and finally brought down by Bobby Mays. Got a hold of the T-shirt. Big number nine. He's slow getting up, too, after making the tackles. You get a good look at Bryson Ross. 
You ask me why I like Bryson Rosser on the three quarterbacks. This is the situation you want your smart quarterback. This is the situation you want a quarterback who knows how to work the clock, who knows how to manage his personnel on the field. And in, in a situation where you're, you're don't have the big guns on offense. You want a guy who's smart and put you in the right ball position. Go, ball go. Third down and eight. Ross's pass was intended for Jackson. And when a late flag comes in. That's a real curious flag coming in from the side judge. I wonder if they're going to call it against Ron Jackson, the receiver. <laughs> An eligible man downfield. Well, that's got to come from one of the interior linemen. Maybe it might have been a, a poor lineman pre-snap. And eligible on the offense downfield. That penalty will be declined. Fourth down. So with that decline of the penalty, it'll bring on a fourth down. Kudak will have to come back out to kick the football. You yeah, see the coaches, they left Rosser real quick and picked the final culprit. So Michael Johnson will stand back at about the 18-yard line to accept this punt from Hudak. He gets off a pretty good punt. He really has kicked the ball well. Johnson makes the play and then is immediately met for no gain. And another flag down on this play. Nice defensive, nice nice special teams play by Tennessee State. You wonder if the flag has got to be a block in the back. That's Justin Williams, the transfer from Oklahoma, number 13. And they expect big things from. And an illegal block against Jackson State is going to move them back. An illegal block in the back. On the run back, be 10 yards from the spot of the foul, for down. So Robert Hughes sees his club inside the 20-yard line, but at least they have the ball. Game starts Friday, September 27th, everywhere. And welcome back. 9.04 left in the football game. We are all even at 28 apiece. Two teams in desperate need of a victory. As coming in, Jackson State was 0-2 after losing to Southern Miss and North Carolina a &T. As for Tennessee State, 1-1, one one, they lost their opener to South Carolina State, 26-20, beat Prairie View last week, 41-8. But these two teams highly regarded when the season began. And Kent throws the pass. It's complete for Cunningham. Again, comes up very quickly defensively to make the stop. Yeah, Cunningham has a nice, he has a nice break on the ball. He, he can, he can see, he sees the whole field, he sees the ball being delivered and comes up and makes a nice break on the ball. One advantage about, you look at this kid Cunningham, he's also a member of the track team, was in the championships in the OVC, indoor, outdoor, runs the 60 yard dash, runs the four by 100 meter. So he's a true athlete and he's a pretty good football player. Second down now and six. Manning, the guy who goes in motion. Kent, looking out in the flat, finds his receiver. It's complete to Chris Jones, and Jones is going to be shy of a first down by about a yard. And we have another flag on the play, a holding against Jackson State. Again, just to remind you, Jackson State came into this contest averaging eight penalties a game for 68 yards. Tennessee State came in averaging 11 penalties a game. Too many mistakes to be oh. good football team. Holding the offense at the distance to the goal. Repeat second down. And that puts a lot of pressure on Robert Kent to try to make something happen when you're going backwards all the time. That's tough. Yeah, it's tough. This team really has not played well all day long. They've had a few breaks here and there, but they just have not gotten the mental aspect of this game down to them. So now it's second down in 16. Single set back is Tanaka Counselor. Kent, going to throw. Has a little room, going to try to run the football. Take it out close to the 20-yard line but still very short of a first down by about five yards. We well, saw in that last, that last play, Torrey Ross, number 80, the receiver, comes back in 
from his slot position to add some protection for Robert Kemp. And, the, and you really have to think that Jackson State is, is really having a lot of problems internally if they're bringing their wide receivers in to block for, for Robert Kemp. Again, Tennessee State has really picked things up. They have sacked Robert Kemp here in the second half five times. So they have picked up the pressure. Here they come again. Kent's pass in and out of the hands of his intended receiver, Torrey Ross, the freshman. Doesn't look like Deion Giddens wants to get off it. Once again, because of all the pressure, Robert Kent is not setting his feet. And so what you have is the ball sailing very high. Giddens is right there to make the hit, and that was not a catch. That ball came in and out of the hands of the receiver and was not a catch. And you can hear a smattering of boos out in the crowd. Because if they count that as a reception, there's a lot of people that saw that it wasn't. Except the guys in the striped shirt. <laughs> <laughs> and most of the guys who make the call. Clock still rolling as we come up to the seven-minute mark here in the fourth quarter. All tied up. Kent going to hold on to it. And got tripped up just as he was about to build some momentum. Aaron Harris is the guy that caught up to him. Harris, Aaron Harris is the guy that's listed as a defensive lineman and a linebacker. He's a, he, a guy, the kind of guy you want in the spread offense because he's the guy in the zone blitz. You can drop him and do different things with him. And that time he saved a big play by getting a tackle on Robert Kemp. Second down now. Three for first. High formation. They give it inside the launch, Nolan. And you knew, you just knew Jermaine Beal was going to be around. Boy, we talked so much about Jackson State's linebacker, Elgin Andrews, before the game, the, the SWAC Defensive Player of the Year preseason. And this man right here, Beal has done an outstanding stole the show. job. He stole really the show. has stole the show defensively from both sides of the ball. He has been the defensive standout. He and Cunningham, the Tennessee State, have been so out, so all over the place and covering all aspects of this game. So here we are, third down now in three. Big play right here for Jackson State. Again the eye. Fakes it to counselor. Pass is complete. Caught by the freshman, Tory Ross for first down. I'm sorry. What, what Tennessee State is doing is they're keeping their corners flat. Watch Giddens. He's going to let him go. Here's Giddens right now. He's going to let him go and come back inside. What that does is it keeps everything inside so that they complete passes, but it makes them work to get down the field. And with five and a half minutes left in the ball game, it's exactly what Tennessee State wants to do. Use up this clock and push this thing into overtime if you have to, but don't let them strike and get down the field fast. Watch a little ball control by the Tigers. This time they hand it off inside the counselor. Once again coming in and flying all over the place is Aaron Harris, who now has picked up his play. Yeah, I'm real impressed with the game plan of Tennessee State in this ball game. Oh, and that's something you don't want to see. No, you don't want that. If you're running back at this point in this ball game, start to, start to limp off the field. I mean, they have Lawrence Nolan, the big guy, but he doesn't have that breakaway speed that counts for that. A exactly, and that's what, what Jackson State has always relied on, is that, that breakaway speed, that big play capability, and Nolan doesn't have it. He'll, he'll, Nolan will put it between the tackles. He'll lower his shoulder a little bit, but they need something big strike to happen quick. So here's Kent, passing situation, looking out, and Cunningham. Wow, pass was intended for Tim Manning, and Cunningham said, uh-uh, what are you going to learn? You can't fool over here, that is. Textbook coverage by Cunningham, good position. As you said, he's a track athlete, turns his head and runs with the receiver. The ball is under throwing him. Whoa, he's a, now he must be a sprinter and a jumper. <laughs> <laughs> this guy is an athlete. He's had a great game today. Just a junior from Orlando, Florida, Scott Cunningham. So here we are, third down and nine. They were able to complete the last third down play. See if they can get it again. Robert Count Kent with just one back. And they brought everybody on this one. And Kent removes the pressure, gets the first down, and gets inside Tennessee State territory to the 45. 
Robert Kent's going to get his film with his wideouts, and they're going to show this film over and over and over. He is taking a lot of pressure coming in his face. Guys are coming free in his face. His receivers have to know this. They have to start breaking off the route. That's what this offense is predicated on. Receivers understanding when to break off routes and giving Robert Kent someone to throw the ball to. Big time run for Kent, who picked up 16 yards on the play. First and 10, as Jackson State continues to drive the football downfield. They're at the 45. They're going to run that option again. And they give it to the back. Brandon Cox and Cox picks up a couple of yards before being met by Jermaine Gill, of course. That was not a TV word. <laughs> you know, like guys like Jamil Holloway are sitting at home going, oh, no, don't, don't use that it. term. <laughs> They're mad at me for using it. That's it. right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what happened? He saw 52. He saw Beal and said, I'm done with it. I'm Absolutely. giving the ball up. I refuse to hold on to this football. <laughs> I've been hit too many times. Have you seen Jermaine Beal, all day? <laughs> That's right. In his head, he said, well, option means I have the option to get rid of this. <laughs> Second down in eight. And here's Kent. Over the middle. Pass is complete. And how about this young man right here, Corey Ross, who has made some big time catches on this drive alone. He's got one more first down and caught another one over the middle right here. And watch Ross. He's going to come right into this area right here and settle down. As soon as he gets into the middle of the field, he sees linebackers clear enough. He settles down right in that area. Watch him. He's the inside receiver. He's at 397. He settles down in that nice soft spot there. Give your quarterback, show me a number, give him something to throw the ball to. Five receptions for 57 yards for him. man. So here we go again. Ross, the freshman from Jackson, Mississippi, gives his club good field position. They're in scoring range. Council, obviously the answer's okay as he picks up another big carry. Although we do have a flag on the play, thrown at the four-yard line. It's going to be very important now, and you talked about it, but it's very important for Tennessee State. No flag. No flag. No flag. You talk about that ankle being okay. There's a nice, nice pull there by the lineman coming through. And this guy, Tanaka Counselor, has really carried this team. Kent has done it with his legs. He's done it with, with his heart. But this guy, Counselor, really has done the job bringing his team down the field with some great runs just like that. Knocking at the door. Jackson State. First to call at the five. Oh, he may drop the football. I almost wanted to say option again, but Tom looked at me and said, please don't. Manny Robles, number 61 in there, disrupting things and almost creating another turnover. You're going to see Robles just shoot the gap, 61 right there. That guard, the right guard has to close down and close off the inside gap. When you run option football, you have to secure from the center out so the quarterback has the lane to get down the sideline, get down, get down the line straight. Robert Hughes looking at 224 left in the ball game and a tie score. See if he can change that. Tie ball game 28-28, just 224 left, and Jackson State has the football inside the 10. Do you take your time, try to run this clock down, or you try to get it in there immediately? Well, I think you just have to run your run your game and try to get the ball in the end zone as soon as possible. Can't take hand off, can't running over folks again. Rockman had a chance to make the stop, finally brings him down, but not until Kent gets him to the one-yard line. You know, this is what you get from the, the preseason player of the year. Lowering your head, running over safeties, running through the line of scrimmage, running the option when everyone was expecting you to come with four or five wide receivers. He's gotten it done all day long by doing the little things and doing the things that no one expects. We thought we'd see this guy just sitting there winging the ball that's, all over the right. place, but we've seen him, you know, show us that he's a pretty good football player. Runs hard and is directing this football team down the field when they needed it most. Now inside the five counts, they're nothing doing. Is that Beal? It's a big is time that play right in the middle. Who do you think it is? 
Beal has just been just tenacious in the middle of this defensive line and has come up with the big plays at the right time. So here we are, fourth down. Remember, they did not kick the field goal, and you wanted them to kick that field goal earlier. And this is when you're lucky You're lucky that your quarterback has gotten to this point in the field, but now you have to call a timeout with just a minute left, and he's freezing his own kicker. So we're going to take a commercial break, and Dominic Addison is going to think about this field goal that could potentially win the game. There's fast food, and then there's KFC. Welcome back, folks. Well... Here's the moment, the moment you dream about when you're a kicker, with an opportunity to give your team the lead for the win. It's good to he can't hear you. <laughs> Dominic Addison, your freshman, 5'11", 222. The kick's up, and the kick is good. So the freshman with the field goal from 20 yards out gives Jackson State the 31-28 lead with a minute, two seconds left on the clock. <laughs> Robert Hughes comes with a smile. Nice pressure kick by the freshman. I'm sure he's saying, if y'all let me do that earlier, you would have been biting your nails. Keeps his head down. Nice and calm. He's got go, to go back and thank his guys, but watch the judge. We can get a little bit of, I think we get a little bit of a smile out of them on this one. Well, now, uh, since we have this moment, I want to thank the folks that helped us get this broadcast done. Obviously, the sports information directors, Dean Wilmot from Tennessee State, and also from Jackson State, Miss Deirdre Bell Jones, who, by the way, just was appointed sports information director at Jackson State, although I got a feeling it's a different title now. I think it's associate athletic director. Well, but she replaces well, external information. She replaces Sam Jefferson, who had been at ja Jackson State for I mean, from what I'm, I'm getting, what, 28 years now, 29 years? So, of course, we want to congratulate Sam Jefferson on his retirement. Just a tremendous man. Helped us throughout the years here at Black Entertainment Television. Sam, if you're listening, although I don't think he is, because I know he's here somewhere watching the game. <laughs> but, but we say thanks. And Deirdre also wanted me to, you know, make sure I let Martha and Louie know, her parents down in Fort Worth, that she's working. And she is. And doing a great job. Well, you got all the information. To write this stuff down, though, so that drive, 16 plays, 83 yards. It took eight minutes and two seconds. So now Tennessee State, with not much time, as Carlos Wright takes the kickoff and gets it out to about the 27-yard line, which is where Tennessee State now has the football. Yeah, you, you talked about that drive, that eight-minute drive, and that's what that's what championship teams do. Good that's job. what the good teams do when it's crunch time. Despite how they played all day long, they come through in the clutch. And that's exactly what Jackson State did. And I have to point, Robert Kent came up with some big runs during that drive, keeping the ball. Again, Tennessee State was keeping the ball on the field, didn't let those guys get out of bounds. And Robert Kent did a nice job of running the football. 54 seconds left for this young man right here, Bryson Rosser. Pass over the middle, ooh, in and out of the hands of his intended receiver, Ron Jackson. Ron Jackson's going to have sore ribs tomorrow at the shot that he just took. <laughs> Lamont Woolard has been absolutely a monster out there at times. And Woolard timed it perfectly to give him a shot right in the back just as the ball got there. Woolard made a play one time at the one-yard line to stop a run and then came right. back and got the interception in the end zone. Made a good play there. Here's Rosser now on second down. Got plenty of time, gonna run with it, got away from the defenders. And if we got a first down, and it looks like he did, they should stop the clock with 39 seconds left. You know, one of the mistakes that very often happens, especially with young quarterbacks in a situation like this, they had a minute to go, 54 seconds at the beginning of, beginning of this drive. They don't have to get it all. They can get 10, they can get 15, let a wide receiver make a, make a break up at the reception. You don't have to get greedy and get it all. Clock's running, and he's not in a hurry, it doesn't seem. Rosser now, plenty of time over the middle. Pass, oh! 
a host of Jackson State players around the intended receiver, C.J. Johnson. You know, George, this is another reason why you go with one quarterback and let him get in there and make mistakes and make things happen. Rossa has to know that, yes, a first down stops the clock, but the clock starts as soon as the ball is set. It's not a stoppage of the, of the clock, and you have the liberty to stand and luxury to stand at the line of scrimmage and make calls. That clock starts as soon as the ball is set. A veteran quarterback knows that and gets to play in. Second down, 21 seconds left. They have to go 60 yards for a touchdown. Rossa downfield and in and out of the hands of the defender. Michael Cooley had a chance at the interception and couldn't hold on to it. And yet, that brings up a fourth down. And just 15 seconds left. And you can see Robert Hughes. Yeah, and Robert Hughes knows that at 0-2, you need a win. You didn't play well with a sloppy game from start to finish. But he knows that right now, with that type of play, he knows he can start to smell it. This means it's just about over. And how it's a big lift off of his shoulders. And how much do they need this win as you get a look at Bryson Rosser and the... You see the slumping shoulder, he knows right away he didn't have it. When the minute it left his hand, he knew right away he didn't have it. Rosser, looking outside, passes, caught on third and ten. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. You, do, you run that play with 54 seconds, and now you're at midfield. Now you cross the 50, and you still have plenty of right, time. Right. A veteran quarterback knows you don't have to go for it all. You just chip away, and there's plenty of time It's left. funny how 54 seconds is a lot longer to an older guy than it is to a younger guy. You know? <laughs> so 54, you're sitting around saying, hey man, I, I got no time whatsoever, right? <laughs> but an old guy looks at you and says, 54? Man, I got plenty what? of time. <laughs> I mean, we can run the whole playbook if you, you can have a sip of, have a sip of your coffee. <laughs> Well, a look at our player of the game brought to you by Red Fusion from Dr. Pepper. Red Fusion, who's your soda and who's your player of the game? Has to be this man right here, Robert Kent, the quarterback, who on the day, 18 of 34. 246 yards, but most importantly, it just seemed as if he was gutsy. He made the kind of plays his team needed at times that they needed. Things didn't go so smoothly for him. And that's exactly what his hero, Steve McNair, would tell him. He would tell him, he, and, 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 you know, Robert Kent will say, you know, I, I was playing the game, but I didn't have a great game. You know, I, 246 yards, I was way off. But you know what? He was and did the things that he had to do to win the football game, and that's what matters, and that's why he's got that, that big smile on his face. By the way, he also rushed the football for 31 yards. And that was the difference maker, I think, in this ball game. He took a lot of hits, he took a lot of sacks, but he pulled it down at the right times and had the big plays in the run game to keep his team on the field in that eight-minute drive where they got the three points. Three seconds left in this ball game. Last play of the game. Rosser with a chance. Everybody lined up to the right of him. He does have one receiver to the left. But he's now supposed to just chuck this in the end zone. And the pass is knocked down. And with that, Jackson State gets their first win of the season. And it's a big one as they knock off Tennessee State by the score of 31 to 28. With that win, they are now one in two on the season. And that man right there, Robert Hughes, has to be extremely happy with his football team. You know, I'm sure that it's a sigh of relief that he gets the win, but in the back of his mind, he is going through all of the, all of the things that they have to work on. They have to work on pass protection. They have to work on the side adjustments by the wide receivers. And they have to, have to, have to find a way to get Kent into a rhythm and whether that's growing draws and screens to loosen up the, 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 the rush of, of, of any defense they're going to face but they have to get this young man into a rhythm so he can do his thing and that's right now in, Rob, in the back of Robert Hughes' mind. On the other hand you can go to your team now and say folks we have now proven that we can win ugly football games. We don't always have to throw for 700 yards. We don't have to have a running back go for 250 like Counselor. We can win football games if they're played down and dirty like this. It, they know that they can win down and dirty like this, but their style is last week, 742 yards. Yeah. Their style is, is 
was playing a tough game and doing a lot of things with their offense. They didn't do that, so that now they have to find an identity. Are we a, a win-ugly team, or are we a team that can put up the numbers and blow people out? Well, we're going to take a commercial break. When we get back, we'll wrap things up here from Memphis, where Jackson State wins 31-28. Today's Black College Football Classic is brought to you by Southwest Airlines, bringing people together with low fares. Collegiate life provides a scholar with a plethora of choices. Take gain class. 